we like. Seems like we are. Okay, so starting off, we'll do a little uh, LTN tutorial as requested by Young Jesus. Um, if you have the mod editor extensions and you go to a new game, you can get this uh, lab scenario with infinite resources and such very good for designing blueprints and figuring out new stuff. And the first thing I'm going to do is, well, I may as well explain this. Um, so I've got a super robo port that doesn't need any power, super construction bots and logistic bots that don't need any power and are ridiculously fast giant substation, infinite power supply, giant radar, a NG, good to see you again, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well, a am suck, good to see you again as well, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Um, one little thing to watch out for if you expand this or recreate it, um, you'll want an aggregate prov uh, passive provider chest, contains every item in the game, and also an infinity storage chest. Make sure you click this button here if you put down a new one, it's not there by default. So the bots will only be able to get rid of so many items if you don't do that. So, LTN. Where should we begin? Probably by making some stations. Um, first of all, we're going to need these for testing anyway, so I'll make a few uh, pickup stations. And why don't we just do small trains this time? Actually, we might want to get to uh, the, the train size limit stuff, so let's leave room for that. Okay, but for now, we'll say I missed the second half of the stream yesterday after you started talking, taking out Bidermests. Did I miss anything? Um, not. I mean, I set up the cannons. Um, they could definitely be optimized better, but they are working. Um, after I started taking out Bidermests, I mostly I was taking up biter nests. Um, I may have fixed up some minor things other than that, but as far as I remember, that's pretty much it. All right, so we're gonna drop down some infinity chests, and this is going to be our iron ore mine. Okay, cheers, no worries. And how much is this? 50 times 6. Uh, 1200, that's not that much. Let's do a little bit more, shall we? What's, um... 333, okay. 350. Alright, so this will be enough to a train station. Uh, the easiest thing to do in LTN is to set up a uh, pickup station. Drop-offs can be a little bit more complicated depending on what you're doing, but literally all you need to do is provide a positive signal for a resource that can be picked up to the logistic train stop input and the scheduler will create um, schedules for trains to come and pick this stuff up. We'll do the same... F oh, I should have added some inserters. 
We'll do the same thing for a couple more resources. We don't actually need to name the train stops if we're going to use the LTN uh, scheduling. Nairon Wolf, thank you for the host. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And I will change this one to copper. Stone. And coal. A evil plum. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So the most basic thing to understand about LTN is the logistic train stop input, this little light here. You need to feed it either a positive or a negative signal, depending on whether you want to have LTN coming to pick items up or drop stuff off. A positive number indicates that the easy way to remember, I think, is if you just connect chests to the logistic train stop, a positive number indicates there's something here to pick up. So a negative number can be used to say we would like some iron ore, please. Um, I don't know whether I should jump straight into talking about the other settings that we can give LTN, or if it would be better to just get the most basic example of it demonstrated first. I just want to check something. I think all of the mod settings for this save will be set to the defaults. Yes, good. Because that is definitely a section that we need to go over. But at its most basic, um, let's do a drop-off station here. Well, we can do super inserters, why not? And we're just going to remove all items. Okay. And I guess we're going to need some trains. That might be a good idea. Let's bring you down a little bit more. And then... Like so. Oops. I won't bother with any signals just yet. Uh, just having one train is actually a pretty good way to demonstrate the utility of LTN. Uh, why don't we put this a bit further down here? And we'll put a depot here. Okay, so I'm going to do a double header train. this one. And we'll put some fuel here, even though I could just drop some super fuel in it. But this is a pretty... I, I think the depot is as good a place as any to refuel the trains. Okay, so you'll need a constant combinator. Well, I suppose there are some other ways you could do it, but a constant combinator is probably the best way. And to tell LTN that this is a depot station, all you need to do is feed it a signal called stop is depot. And if you like, you can make a priority version of this station. So if you prefer to have... Actually, I'm not sure if you need stop is depot and then a priority signal, just like you would have request priority on top of everything else with a requesting station, or 
if depth priority by itself will do anything. Let's find out. Um, we'll name this depot and please go to depot. Let's just make sure, shall we? Didn't mean to put rocket fuel in here. Okay, so we're officially stopped at the depot. If this signal, depending on how this works, we'll find out quite soon. So what I'm going to do to get this train to pick up some iron ore, even though we've got random and actually identical names for these stations, uh, what I'm going to do is just say we would like to have 8,000 iron ore, please. No train to transport items found in depots. So this is what I thought it was. Um, so what you're going to need is stop is depot. And optionally, you can have a priority level for the depots. So you can have your trains park in certain areas as a priority. So immediately what LTN does is creates a schedule for this train stop. Uh, for this train that only had depot. Uh, it's going to Robert Hansen, this particular stop over here, and coming back and giving us our iron ore. Did I do the announcement? Yes. Okay. Uh, you may notice it creates temporary stops first. They go precisely to where the station is. That gets rid of the ambiguity of, well, it deals with the ambiguity of the station names. Um, we schedule a temporary stop and then go to the nearest station with that name, which is zero meters away. Uh, and then we do what we need to do. Now, here we see some of the default settings. Um, Uh, it'll wait for two seconds of inactivity at each station, and if 120 seconds pass without it doing anything, it'll give up and just keep going. I do not necessarily agree with these default settings, because, for example, um, I'm going to turn this off until the train gets back, but if I ask for only a thousand iron ore, What's going to happen is LTN is going to schedule this train to pick up 1,000 iron ore from here. Unless you have some circuitry set up specifically to precisely load that 1,000 iron ore, the inserters are, keep gonna, uh, are going to keep swinging, and the two seconds of inactivity is not going to trigger. So the train is going to get completely filled up with iron ore, um, let's suppose we have, so we did 250 iron ore per, per cargo wagon. Um, how much can fit in here? 100. Okay, so if we go 5,000 minus... 250. Well, let's, let's just say we have, like, only two slots available in each of these chests. And that just says, at least, yep, okay. So what's going to happen? We're asking for... Let's say we're asking for 100, 400 um, iron ore. Just enough to fill up these chests. Exactly. Uh, what's going to happen with the default settings is we're going to get a schedule to pick up. Oh, wait, I forgot. Um, 400 isn't going to trigger it because the default minimum is 1000. So let's make it uh, minus 250 each, or 750.
that's not quite right. Let's do exactly, and then change it to at least. We'll just make it a steel chest for the moment, so we know that's not going to interfere with what we're doing. Oh, that's too full. Uh, one, two, three, four, two hundred and fifty. Two fifty. Two fifty. Two fifty. Okay. So there's exactly a thousand two hundred and fifty per cargo wagon uh, space for iron ore in this uh, station. We're going to request one thousand. And LTN is going to create a schedule. We're going to be asking for a thousand iron ore. And we're going to immediately get a thousand iron ore and keep going because two seconds of inactivity. And we're going to bring 8,000 iron ore back down to this station. And then we're going to get stuck. And we're going to wait 120 seconds doing absolutely nothing. Having one less train available in the system for two minutes. And once that uh, period of time is up... We're going to go back to the depot with random items in our train. And back it goes. And then, if we want to say... Let's just get rid of this for the moment. Let's say... We have another station asking for copper. Okay, there's two ways I could demonstrate this. They're both kind of severe. Um, if I ask for like a thousand copper, it's going to fill up the rest of this with copper. And then it's going to come down here. And both resources would be dumped into this station. Or if you've got filter inserters, uh, the train is going to get stuck and confused again. Alternatively, if I set this to ask for a full train load of copper, that's actually going to be the same but worse, because we're going to go here to pick up copper. It's going to fill up, well, it's going to try to fill up, and it's going to stop there because we're full of iron. And then, after 120 seconds pass, uh, we're going to come down to the station and we'll be dropping off even though we only asked for copper we're going to be giving it a whole lot of iron which obviously could be a little bit of a problem so two of the default settings that I recommend changing um, under mod settings is finish loading this is the two seconds of inactivity setting i don't recommend using that one at all and stop timeout duration in seconds before trains are forced out of a station uh, i recommend just turning that off by setting it to zero you will have scenarios if you mess up somehow where a train is going to be stuck at a station indefinitely until you come and do something about it. Um, but personally, I think that is better than the alternative. Uh, if some kind of mistake happens, ending up with trains coming back to depots with random resources, um, trains delivering random resources to other stations, it's definitely not helpful. That said, I would still recommend at your depots having something in place to empty trains that come back with resources. Um, sooner or later you're probably going to have some issue where you want to just send a train back to the depot, get it out of the way of other trains or something. Maybe it's got resources in it, it's, it's good to have a system in place to drain the trains of those resources.
Um, I also would recommend instead of using LTM for this uh, specific use case. Uh, it's actually, as far as I've managed to figure out anyway, it's actually a lot easier to just have a uh, trash pickup with vanilla um, train stops. So you have your trash train that has a depot that's like in the middle of your main base where there's bots or something to take away the stuff. Um, check what's in the chests over here. If we can get the wire to reach. And just have something like fresh pickup and enabled if anything is detected. I don't know, non-LTN train seems like the easier choice. For some things it is. Um, I actually sort of overthought this and scratched my head for a bit as to how to do a trash train with LTN, and then I realized, oh yeah, just use a uh, vanilla train stop. So why use LTN? Um, Nexus Snelt, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Uh, if you haven't noticed, uh, we've got one train here that can do well, it, it can go and be a train for any resource that can fit in cargo wagons. We don't need to have a coal train, a stone, tra a stone train, a copper train, and an iron train to have this network functional. If we need more throughput, we can always add more trains, but what we don't need to do is realize Maybe we're at a point where there aren't enough iron trains specifically, and add some more trains just for that. As long as there are trains sitting in the depot at any given time, we know we've got enough trains. Is having many trains that bad? When you scale up, it actually does get kind of uh, crazy. Like, um... I remember having something like 20 or 30 iron trains in a recent playthrough and I would add like three or four at a time. Um, meanwhile, like, I, I literally had dozens and dozens of trains sitting idle because we had enough trains for one resource or another. Another thing that you can do with LTN that you can't do with vanilla is get fancy with some of the train stops. For example, I can set up one of these train stops to be a pickup for two resources at a time. So I'll get rid of this. And actually, I should have kept that. Move this up here. Get rid of this one. Now, if you're going to do this, you'd better be precise about how the inserters work, because if you leave them sticking out like this, there's going to be trouble. A shack cut. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, so there's a, ye a little yellow constant combinator looking thing that comes with the LTN train stop called a logistic train stop output. When a train is doing a pickup, you can actually see, uh, I believe it, I believe you'll get two signals. Um, if the train arrives with something in it, you'll see a signal for that. Um, but more importantly, you'll see a signal for what the train is requesting, which is very useful. So here it's going to say stone. It also has 33 for all of these values right here. Oh no, 33 for the uh, the locomotives and 30 for the cargo wagons. I'm not sure why there's a separate... there's two signals for each of these types. 
uh, but you've got the encoded positions of locomotives and the encoded positions of cargo wagons. Uh, most of you are probably scratching your head about what does 30 and 33 mean here. Basically, it is a binary number uh, so that we can record like 10001 for the positions of the locomotives uh, in just one variable on a combinator. So uh, it's a little bit tricky to utilize that, but that's all that information is. So the first bit is worth 1, the second bit is worth 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So if the last bit and the first bit are switched on, that's worth 33. 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 32. Um, anyway, one thing you can do with LTN, which as far as I can think of isn't possible with vanilla, is you can save some space by combining at least two items into a single station, even if it's for um, something that you want to pick up en masse. So what I'm going to do here is set these to set filters and set stack size to S. I think I got them all. Copy that over here. And then we'll want one of these for each uh, cargo wagon. And then just in case this isn't divisible by four, there'll be one more. So what I'm going to do is uh, check how much stuff is in the train subtract that from uh, from what the uh, what the train is asking for Oops. so we'll connect that to here read train contents on the red wire we've got what the train is asking for um, however I would like to remove those extra signals that we just talked about the easiest way to do that, with the fewest combinators, is if we say each signal that's greater than zero, put it through, and then we connect this to here and give it some constants of negative a lot for the signals that we don't want. Uh, that's the wrong one. This one. And here we're going to assume that we're not going to get any fluid wagons or artillery wagons. Okay. So we're going to pass the signals from there into there. And this one goes here. And then when train comes, we're not going to get these signals. Okay, so the next step, now that we know how many more items of which type the train wants uh, added to it, is to just divide that by uh, 20, sorry, yeah, no, 24 inserters, or if we're down to a smaller amount, four inserters, or if we're down to a, an even smaller amount, just one inserter. And to do that, Unfortunately, we need a couple of um, arithmetic combinators for each of these functions because we can't tell the stack filter inserter to set the stack size to whatever filter it's being fed. I would really like to see that feature. 
but for now we're just going to have to do it this way. So this is going to be every single inserter receives this signal, each divided by 24 output each, and the same number as S for stack size. And then we do the same thing again with the remainder. Uh, no, not that one. With the remainder, which is modulus, output each, and then feed that into these ones, each divide by four cargo wagons, and then we get the remainder from that for the last, um, the last inserter. So that is S, yep. Yeah. And then each remainder four. Uh, that actually comes from here. And I guess we need a stack size for that as well. And that's going to be just one inserter for whichever resource. Right, so now we have a combined pickup station. Uh, let's ask for some iron. Let's say negative 6,789. And we're going to get a very specific amount of iron ore placed into this train, if I've done this correctly. Should be pretty full. Yep, there we go. 6.9k. That does not sound right. So how did that happen? We didn't get any inserters still sticking out though, so you would think that worked. Let's try a smaller number so we, we can see exactly what we're asking for. Uh, 123. I am curious as to exactly how this happened. 6.9k, again. Did I put the number in wrong earlier? This one it was 6.7. 6789. Maybe we should slow it down. Is it paused? Oh, this is too low for the default uh, request threshold. Um, request threshold is 1000, provide threshold is 1000. I was actually thinking about changing these so that a station won't work unless you give it a request or provide threshold. Um, that will certainly prevent uh, It'll prevent stations from accidentally, uh, LTN from accidentally thinking a station that has a little bit of extra of something. 240, that's odd. How did we get 240? Let's watch this in slow motion this time. Yeah, if, um, if you have a low enough default uh, provide threshold, and you go significantly over the amount that uh, LTN wants at a station, 
depending on how you set up the circuitry, if this thing is receiving a positive number, it'll think that this is actually a pickup station or a drop-off station. It, it'll think a drop-off station is a pickup station. It doesn't understand which direction the uh, filter inserters are pointing. It only receives... It, it only acts based on the negative or positive signal that it's receiving. Oh, that's not what I'm looking for. Okay, so... Negative 10k, that's... Is it connected? Not yet. There we go. Okay, so 123 iron ore. There's nothing... Oh, I forgot to... That's probably why. I forgot to subtract what was actually in the train. I don't know how it worked as well as it did without this. Avery, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, I actually have no idea how that worked so well. Um, I guess it's just because the train left as soon as it had enough. That's probably it. Okay, so now it should be working. So... Stack size of 5 for each of these 24 stack filter inserters is going to be 120. And now we need another... This hasn't output yet. There we go. We need another 3. Once that gets through these next few combinators, we've just got one inserter still working. Um, because 3 divided by 4, it's, there's nothing... Uh, 3 divided by 4 is 0, 3 remainder 4 is 3. Uh, so that's getting passed down to these last ones. And it's going just to this one... Uh, inserter. Why is this one not... Oh. Why is it not outputting the stack size? There we go. That was about to not work correctly. And that should be 3 iron ore. And that's exactly 123. Fantastic. So, for a more interesting or extreme example of just how much space you can save with LTM. Is this it? No. Where did I put my new Omni smelter? Is it under space exploration? It is. I just didn't recognize it because of the big question mark. Um, it's a little hard to see with this view, but well, I suppose I could put it down, even though there's going to be a couple of items missing. Um, but this actually has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, could be 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 stations within this space. Uh, to say nothing of all of the room that's left over for production. Uh, that's pretty hard to beat with with vanilla I mean you you can't of course we can also we've also got a couple of combined drop-offs uh, a couple of combined drop-offs at the top combined pickups at the bottom and we've even got a combined pickup and drop-off station um, it goes a long way in terms of being able to save space and fit a lot of function into just one station. Um, but yeah. So the main things are a negative signal creates a request, a positive signal tells LTN that we've got things available, 
be very careful about um, request thresholds and provide thresholds. Um, I probably, I haven't tried it yet, but I probably would recommend changing this to a very large number. And then basically a station will not work until you provide it a provide or request threshold. You can give it a request or provide threshold based on a count of items, or you can do a stack threshold, which is normally what I would recommend. 160 is for cargo wagons. And we could set this to request threshold of one, if we like. Um, it, although it's not going to pick up from this other station unless it's requesting four stacks, uh, four tr uh, cargo wagons. So let's say 8,000. Um, one thing to watch out for is, I hate to say it, but it's probably not recommended to set your requests to completely fill some storage chests that take from the train. Um, probably best to leave a little bit of slack at least. Uh, oh yeah, speaking of default settings that can really mess you up, the delivery timeout default is 10 minutes. So after, if you have some traffic problems or broken rail or something, after just 10 minutes, LTN will assume that a train is just gone, like it was destroyed. Um, this can be a problem, especially if you are... Well, if you set a train limit of 1 to a drop-off station, uh, that signal is found here you may find that you still get multiple trains sent to the station at the same time and it can overload the station even though you set your limits correctly um, so i would probably recommend uh, changing this to either something so large that it's practically infinite or i don't know at least an hour or two unless you manage to make a system that never has any traffic jams or anything and you are absolutely betting on never having that problem. Um, there was something else, I think. Let's see. Minimum and maximum train length. Oh, here, here it is, encoded network ID. That's what I almost forgot to talk about. Minimum and maximum train length is pretty intuitive. Just remember to include the number of locomotives. So this train that we're dealing with here is actually a length of six. Um, priority is just what it looks like. A higher number is a higher priority. You can set it negative. Uh, that does seem to work from my own experiments. So for instance, having a rail block which destroyed items because we could only produce them at a specific ratio with coal mining, and we ended up having to stop because we had too much stone or copper. Um, just setting that to a negative priority made it automatically the lowest priority. So we're not wasting any resources until it's completely necessary. Encoded network ID is a little bit tricky, but suffice to say it is a temp QA flag. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, temp uh, encoded network ID is basically virtual train networks. Uh, so if I say, I believe I can do it to depots. So if we set all of these three to encoded network ID one, and I'll set it to the coal pickup and nothing else. Now let's try requesting something other than coal.
creating delivery. Oh, what? Does it definitely not? Wait, what? Hold on, did I miss something? Encoded network ID 1. That's odd. Oh, I forgot. Please say that the logic? What, what about the logic? Please say that the logic. Uh, so what I forgot to point out here, or forgot to do here, the default, uh, default default network ID is negative one, which is effectively every single network. So on all of these um, other train stops where I haven't put an encoded network ID, they're effectively on every network, including network one. Uh, so what I'm going to do instead is put all of these other ones on network ID two. And basically what that means is these two train networks are the stations on these different train networks are not allowed to interact with each other. You won't get a schedule with both. No station supplying iron ore found in network 1. Arithmetic logic? Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, just as soon as I finish explaining this real quick. So, just like with the um, encoded positions of the locomotives, uh, the way this encoded network ID works is it is in binary. So if we have this one on network 1 um, and this one on network 2, we could have a station that is on both of these networks if we give it a value of 3. So the bit that is worth 1 and the bit that is worth 2 come together to make 3. Um, If I f get this right, I'm not sure if I have to have the drop-off station as number three, or if changing the depot to three would work. I don't think so. Okay, so we'll leave that back at one, and we'll put this on network three, which means network one and two. No train to transport in network 2 with length between 0 and 0. 0 and 0. That's odd. Did I accidentally put in a train length limit somewhere? Or does 0 just mean any length? You are in the depot right now. What if I put you in both networks? There you go. So it wasn't to do with train length. Yeah, so this one is on network 2. Uh, these two are on network 3, which means both network 1 and 2. And I'll create a... Uh, I'll create a display to help visualize that in a moment. So how this uh, these combinators work is in order to load precisely what a train is asking for, we first get uh, from this logistic train stop output, we get a number that is how much, oh hello, uh, how much the train is asking for, change the request threshold here, and the provide threshold. Okay, let's do a little simulation over here while the train is doing its thing. Where's my constant combinator? So let's say our train is asking for uh, 2,000... Uh, 
345 iron ore. Um, this part just removes the superfluous signals. So that's going to go to here. I'll simplify it a little bit this time. This is reading what's in the train already as it's getting loaded and multiplies it by negative one, so it subtracts it from this. My friend, I need this logic. Sure, I'll make a blueprint. Well, I think I've posted a few blueprints like this, but I'll post this one as succinctly as possible. Um, so now we've got on this red wire the amount that we still want to put in the train. The first thing we do with that is divide by the number of stack inserters. And we're going to send that to all of these stack inserters and set their filters. Why is this not input sig? Oh, this should have been positive. Okay, there, there we go. Uh, so we're going to send that signal to all of these stack filter inserters along with the same number as S. Uh, S is to set the stack size. A Niron Wolf, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Uh, so that's why you keep seeing pairs of, really? Uh, that's why you keep seeing pairs of combinators here with the S on one of them. Let's just do that for now. Okay. So what we have here is the total divided by 24, set the filter and set the stack size. So if we're putting in say 96 more iron ore into the whole train, all of these are going to be active and their stack size is going to be set to 4. Uh, if it's above the maximum stack size, it's just going to be at the maximum. Pretty good. Had an intense weekend. How so? So once we've done that, we get the remainder. So let's imagine for a second that we've dropped below 24 items that we still want to put in the train. Um, oh, just That looks weird. And I just... there we go. Never mind. Uh, so we're still trying to put 24 items in this train. Nothing comes out of here. We get the remainder of each divided by 24 and output it through this. And then we say each divided by 4 and stack size again. And this green wire is connected to one inserter for each cargo wagon. So we're doing the same thing again, but we're just dividing the remainder by four. And then we take the remainder of that and we feed it to just one inserter. If you are doing this with a train station that is only ever going to be completely filling a train, you could get rid of these. So you can drop the combinator count down by just a little bit. Um, it will get stuck if for some reason you've got a train that's asking for a number not divisible by four items. But other than that, it's going to be fine. And yeah, that's basically it. It won't just get down to the remainder before this does anything as well. So. This will actually add a little bit more on top of what the other inserters are putting in uh, once your stack sizes are getting low, but it all works out um, to enter everything precisely. I need an arithmetic signal so that manipulators with filters for resources would receive a signal from LTN. Sometimes LTN brings garbage from a previous job to another station. Please show how to work. Yeah, so there's two things that I recommend doing. I think is that is part, yes, that is one of the solutions, uh, Niron Wolf. 
So there's a couple of things I recommend doing to make sure LTN doesn't bring garbage from another station, as you say. Um, for one thing, even though the settings I'm about to recommend will uh, keep this from happening for the most part, I do recommend at your depots having something to pick up items that are remained. Uh, because sometimes you'll run into some issue and you'll just want to send your train back to the depot just to resolve something. So it's good to have a system to recycle this stuff back into the maybe a main base or maybe the LTN network in general. Uh, that said, there's a couple of settings that I recommend changing from the defaults. Uh, the first one is delivery, uh, not that one, where is it? Finish loading. So by default, there's a two second inactivity setting uh, condition added to the uh, the stops for the for the scheduling that's automatically made by LTN. What this means is, especially with the default provide and request threshold of only a thousand, often you'll get a small delivery scheduled by LTN, and unless you've gone out of your way to make a precise loader, um, you'll actually get LTN overfilling the, the station will overfill the train, um, which can lead to LTN sending a train to a drop-off station that doesn't have room for the items. And then, in combination with another default setting that LTN has, uh, stop timeout, default 120 seconds. After two minutes, the train will just give up, and it'll go back to the depot full of items. Um, which obviously is not necessarily very helpful. So what I strongly recommend, turn off stop timeout, turn off finish loading, and uh, arguably set the request threshold and provide threshold to something ridiculously high so that um, you actually have to set it yourself at each station, um, and then LTN won't surprise you with a schedule while you're still building it, for example. How to receive signal on LTN to filter manipulators? Uh, this yellow combinator, so when you, when you drop an LTN stop, there's three parts to it. There's the stop itself, uh, logistic train stop input, and logistic train stop output. The output will... here we go. Uh, yoink. The output will spit out what the train was asking for along with... I think it also includes the... what was in the train when it arrived at a drop a pickup station, um, but it'll output what the train is asking for as well as uh, these types of signals that tell you where the cargo wagons and locomotives and whatever else are. So, yeah, basically you just need to connect to this yellow... I'll, I'll use... Um, I'll, I'll cheat a little bit. I'll place some like this. I don't know if you can do it in the normal game. But it's just a yellow constant combinator looking thing. As for how to make sense of uh, these signals over here, uh, first of all, we're going to need some displays. Let me think about this. So we need to do some bit shifting. Okay. Uh, let's see. The we'll, we'll work backwards. Uh, the final step is to say each remainder 2. Output each. That tells us if this is an odd number. 
there's only one bit that is worth an odd number, and that is the bit that represents one. Um, set these to anything greater than zero. And then we're going to uh, bit shift random amounts to the left or right. Is it left or is it right that we usually do this? Let's find out. Okay, so we're going to have some number and we're going to be bit shifting it different numbers to the left and right. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, Six. Actually, why don't we... Well, no, I'll do it with com constant combinators first. Okay, so here we have some value worth 17. I think I set this up correctly. So this bit is worth a zero. This bit is worth one. This bit, uh, two rather. Sorry, no. This this is worth one, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four. Add these up, and we have sixteen plus one, which is seventeen. Um, if we bit shift this different amounts to the left and right, we we quite literally like move the bits left and right. So this is 17 in binary. If we set up a, a system that bit shifts this a dynamic amount of numbers to the left and right, we can hold a lot of information this way. Looks like binary 17, that's because it is. Right decreases, I guess so. So 17, remainder two, is an odd number, so that's on, and then we bit shift it four to the right. That makes sense, yeah. Even though we're moving left to to like from the center here, if that makes sense. Um, it's kind of like one, two, three, four, and then that one would be on if that. So with this, we can look at. Um, well, that's going to do an each. How about we do encoded positions of locomotive? I'm going to have to do a lot of clicks for this, aren't I? And as soon as the train comes back, we should see binary 33. Here it comes. Right makes the least significant digit drop out. Yep, and there we go. Locomotive, something else, locomotive. Um, but yeah, unless you're going to do some kind of dynamic fuel loader or something like that. Uh, you don't really have to worry about this stuff, except that you'll need to get rid of it um, if you're going to use the each signal. If you're going to do something like this um, and it's only going to be loading one type of resource, you could get rid of this part and just use like iron ore divided by 24 instead of the each signal. Um, but yeah, I think that has covered just about everything for now. Um, it's obviously a bit disorganized and not rehearsed, but do we have any questions at this point? 
Looks like you've got editor extensions running for your lab world. Yes, indeed. Editor extensions is a really good mod for messing around in a world with infinite resources so you can figure things like this out. Let me just take a sip of water and see if I can remember anything I haven't uh, haven't revised today. Yes, pick a dollies. Uh, a lot of items can be moved around with this mod. Just point at it and press. Uh, hold shift and press the arrow keys by default. Um, you can also bind a key to rotate the long combinators around like this. And the best part is it will preserve wire connections. And it, it'll respect the rules when it comes to the length of the wires as well. So you get to keep um, whatever settings uh, that you put on these combinators, move everything around, and you don't have to redo all of that. Which is very useful when you're dealing with a complex uh, circuit that you don't yet understand. You can It's actually really good if you're trying to learn from someone else's blueprint. You can pick it apart and move it around, change the layout to something that makes more sense to you, especially if it's something that's been compacted. Um, I might have a good example here somewhere. Uh, circuits... where is it? I don't... oh, let me search. Max? Yeah. I can't remember if this was my attempt at this. I think it was. Well, it's sufficiently complicated for this to be a good example. It, obviously, this part in particular was sort of compacted, but you can very easily move this stuff around so you can better sort of inspect it and try and figure out what's going on. Uh, NG is very useful max function. Where did it go? I know I have it in one of these stations. Is it in here somewhere? No. I need to organize my blueprints better. It doesn't help that we've got a bunch of question marks because I turned off a certain mod for the moment. A Royal PS2K. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Uh, Oknos. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Particularly for lining up steps as they propagate, because each combinator adds one tick of delay. Yes. Uh, most of the time, ticks don't matter, but when they do matter, they can really, really matter. Um, all you need to be aware of is when a combinator does its thing. Actually, let's uh, demonstrate this right now. You can see it with the lights turning on and off, although they are usually too fast for you to be able to see it happen. Uh, we'll turn on editor mode. We'll pause the game. Make a constant combinator. Connect this to here. We'll set this to, I don't know, 25. So the thing to be aware of 
with signal timing is wires a velda good to see you again welcome hope you're doing well wires transmit data instantaneously but combinators take one tick to do their thing so we just turned this one on uh, while the game was paused these haven't received anything yet let's advance it by one frame and now we've got each of these combinators are receiving an input signal of 25 and they're not outputting anything um, the next tick they're going to start to output something uh, some of them are anyway wait what Did I lie? Oh, I changed this so it's not each. Or rip. Okay, each. Maybe I should have just changed that to encoded again. Let's do that. That'll be fewer clicks. Okay, so we're going to change this to encoded positions. We'll do 33 again. Actually, let's do a different number to demonstrate it. Um... 19. Okay, so we're outputting 19 from here. One tick later, these ones are receiving it. They're not outputting anything yet. And then you see those blue lights turning on? So we're not outputting anything from these two. These are all meeting the condition though. Um, and you can see if you mouse over each of them that they are outputting something. So wires are instantaneous, so no matter how long these wires are, even if they cover the whole world, uh, combinators that have their input linked to this wire are now going to be receiving an input of whatever's coming out of here. One tick later, we're outputting from these three and then one more tick and these lights should switch on um, so that's very important when you're dealing with things like AAI um, you'll probably find yourself making a circuit that iterates over for example 10 different automatic trucks and if you're going to give different orders to 10 different trucks uh, very quickly, it's very important that the signals all arrive at a certain combinator, well not combinator, a certain building all at the same time. So you may need to add some circuitry that is simply um, an arithmetic combinator, for example, set to each times one, output each, this has two functions. Uh, for one thing, it'll delay by one tick, whatever goes through here. For another thing, it is a one-way wire. You can see those lights switching on one by one. And once you understand this, uh, all of a sudden, memory cells in Factorio can make sense. So all a memory cell does is outputs its own input and goes around in a circle forever. So we're going to say uh, if anything greater than zero, output everything, input count. Well, let's say if anything not equal to zero. So that's unconditional unless there are no signals. And if we give this a signal, oh, what's this? We've accidentally made a timer. So every single tick, this uh, constant combinator is outputting T1. I'll turn this off now. And then what was happening is this is holding onto that signal and it's also receiving one more T every single tick. But now that I've turned it off, 
what we've got here is basically a circle. Um, we could do a worse version of this by... Well, it's not exactly the same. Um, but let's say just for one tick, I turn this on. And then I'll turn this off. So we're going to have that signal going round in circles forever. Uh, we're doing the same thing up here, but this is just the tightest version of this little circle that we can get. So the wire is instantaneous. Uh, each tick we get an input of 856T. One tick later we output 856T. And then instantaneously it crosses the wire and goes to the input. And one tick later it outputs 865T and so on. Um, it's very encounter it's very counterintuitive to look at this if you don't know the mechanics of uh, the signal timing in Factorio. But once you understand that, you can see that this is actually a circle. Uh, but yeah, I unless anyone has any more questions, I don't know if, off the top of my head at least, I can offer anything else for how LTN works. The basics of it is positive signal pickup, negative signal drop off, and then there are some details that you really have to watch out for. Have you made any guides about combinators for YouTube? I think you'd do a great job with a bit of script. Very good at setting up examples and walking through them. Yeah, Nyron Wolf, I've been wanting to do that for a little while and uh, kind of expecting the job that I have right now to have finished by now. Otherwise, I would have gotten started by now. Um, it's, it's dragging on a bit longer than expected. <laughs> I don't have as much free time as I would like to do a, um, a scripted tutorial series, but I'm thinking about trying to squeeze it in anyway. Um, but yeah, it's definitely in the pipe uh, pipeline, on the to-do list, TM. Definitely something I want to do. Consider yourself encouraged. Thank you. All right, so I guess we'll go back to our regular, sh uh, regularly scheduled space exploration. And away we go. How do you deal with liquids and extra trains being scheduled? Uh, Thonium? Liquids are, for the most part, they're just easier. Um, as far as I know, uh, liquids won't respond to request stack threshold or provide stack threshold. So you'll have to use the regular uh, uh, the regular provide threshold and request threshold signals for those. Um, you can effectively set filters on pumps by connecting them to the logistic train stop output and then just saying light oil has to be greater than zero, for example. Um, but yeah, other than that, there's not actually a whole lot to say about fluids specifically with LTN. Uh, if anything, they are easier to deal with. Um, extra trains being scheduled, there's a few default settings that I strongly recommend changing. Those are... Uh, oh, I almost forgot. You can set a, a train limit. So I usually set this to 1. Um, that's just a signal with LTN, max trains. 
uh, limit trains rather. Uh, but LTN will effectively ignore this under a very specific circumstance, which is uh, by default. Where is it? Um, by default, after 10 minutes, if a train hasn't reached its uh, drop off station, LTN will assume it was destroyed or, uh, destroyed or something. It will send another train and it won't account for the resources that that train will drop off at that station, um, assuming it gets there. So that can be a pretty big problem. I recommend changing this to something really high for, I don't know, at least an hour or something. Otherwise, whenever you get traffic problems, you're going to get extra trains being sent to stations. And unless you've got way more storage than you're allowing LTN to use, um, you're going to run into problems there. Um, I guess it's time to put on performance mode. And let's get our RT back. Until empty cargo. That's what I was having the time at. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of default settings. Well, three to be precise, I think. Default settings with LTN are really newbie traps, to be honest. Um, I don't really see the point of uh, sugarcoating that. They really will mess you up and you'll have no idea what you did wrong. And it's kind of very understandable that you'll have no idea what you did wrong. If in doubt, look over the settings for LTN. You may find something that is causing an issue that you didn't realize um, was going to happen. When's that train? Is that it? Yes, indeed. Oh, one moment, please. Hopefully that audio is a little bit better. Um, minor detail, I forgot to actually put my microphone on the microphone stand professional streamer. And here comes Adi. Crispy yay. Significant difference? Yeah, I'm so glad I recorded that LTN tutorial part without the microphone in the right place. All right, let's get ready for some visitors, shall we? Not so many just yet. They're actually not going to deal any damage. That was a bit surprising. I wonder how big a group we're going to get this time. Seems a bit random, the ordering of the artillery. I'm 
Train died outside Roboport range. I made a new station for uranium. I forgot to re-add fuel. <laughs> oh no. Of course it had to happen when I'm in orbit. I think it's by range? Okay. I guess? Yeah, that might make sense. Back in. So what I want to do is get a new wall, um, probably from about here all the way up here. I do want to get that coal. And we're obviously not going to need much of a wall for this little choke point. It's going to be pretty good. Just keep coming. Okay. Seems to be going pretty well now. And the train has run out of ammo again. I feel like making a longer train for artillery just for ammo reasons. On the other hand, this is nice and fast. I guess while I wait, I could... Well, for one thing, I could schedule it to come back as soon as it's got its ammo back. Kind of glad these biters appeared now rather than after I left. Ouch. Don't die in the fire, please. Okay. Maybe I can pick off a couple of little bases before the train comes back. Wait, I thought I put performance mode on. There we go. Oh, that's right. I probably turned it off just to double check after I moved the microphone. I don't suppose there's a way to set that more granularly in OBS where instead of getting a video preview, I can just see the microphone volume. go. There's a way to do the audio meters with the video preview turned off. That would be good. Okay.
train should be on its way back? Question mark? Here it is. You can see the big circle. I'm having trouble clicking on it. Should have a hundred shells. I can't see it now. I might just get a quick peek of it right here. Uh, that was very quick. OBS or slobs? Slobs is black. Uh, well, maybe I should learn something else then. What do you use? Okay, back to shelling. OBS, okay. Yes, studio to use the most current branding. Thirty four million iron, that is very attractive right now. There is one thing. I don't like about this system of destroying resources, which is if I have, if we're living off of like actual mines instead of the core mining, like say we have a good copper mine somewhere, um, we're going to be deleting copper a lot faster than we should. This is probably happening right now, actually. Um, I, I can't really think of a way to set things up so that we can... I, I would need the copper mines, for example, to not be active if we're bottlenecking on iron from core mining. I don't know a way that I could automate that. Have you tried the priority, uh, priorities thing in LTN? Yes. Uh, the item destruction block is set to very low priority. It's like negative 100 or something. Um, that's how we avoid just completely wasting all of our resources. Oh, that looks nasty. Uh-oh. Come back, little robots. Just set the surface mine pick up to low priority so it grabs the core stuff first. Maybe. Well, it, that would help to some extent, I think. I don't know how I could set it up so that we never waste... Uh, I, I would probably have to check something like... If there's copper ore to be picked up from core mining, then stop producing copper ore over here, or stop allowing the pickup to work. I don't know. Oh, I know. I could just have... Um... Okay, I could set this up to be scalable. Where is it? Uh, with our storage system, um, we could maybe report how many, uh, how much copper we could still store, and if this gets full, 
stop. Um, yeah, we just need to say if our copper storage is full, stop allowing this pickup to work. How we go about that exactly um, is we've got a few options. Um, but yeah, I think we'll have to use the circuit wire that we've got going everywhere to check how full we are. Unless... I know there's a mod called, I think it's LTN Manager. You can bring up little screens that tell you how much is in the network, how much is being requested, etc. If that mod also lets you query LTN to see, um, you know, how much copper ore is in demand or how much is stored, then we could easily enable disable this station based on that. Didn't know you had a storage area? Yeah. I would just deconstruct the exit rail. Yeah, maybe. But um, as a temporary solution, sure. But I would like to set it up completely automatic so that we could set up a copper mine, for example. And we're not going to just keep destroying copper until that copper mine is empty. The, we only want to destroy resources if we're bottlenecked on... For example, at the moment, we're, almost all of our iron is coming from core mining. Um, we're bottlenecked on the iron. We're overproducing copper and stone. We need to delete that. Otherwise, we can't keep producing iron and coal. Uh, what is... That doesn't go there. Oh, the train left already. Let's go and fix this weird little error that we made over here and failed to notice for 600 years. Can I move this all the way up here? Fantastic. How did... How is this empty? Oh, because we never dropped off iron here. That makes sense. Alright. Well, it didn't even matter because we're never destroying iron. But still. Iron hide. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let's grab Arty at least one more time. Full cargo. And come and visit, please. Okay. So I'm pretty sure all of this is still in automatic fire range. Some of this as well. A hundred shells might be enough that we need to start auto-targeting, though. I'm surprised how much trouble we're having getting shells over here, though. Considering how many we had before. Okay. Train is... Still up here. What are you waiting for? I really need to update some of this rail. I could just put a bypass... Well, this was supposed to be it. I don't know why... I don't know why we don't get trains going this way in order to cut that corner. Yeah, that's actually really weird. Um, can I get a small train to demonstrate this? Are you 
There you go. And now I just slowed down the artillery train. So the trains are indeed allowed to go this way. So why don't they use this? Ouch, today is my day. I placed a path of 20 roboports to feed my hungry train in a desert. Forgot to feed both locos. Train died on the way back. <laughs> Just two roboports this time. One job. Rip. Is this train stuck? I don't think so. No, this one should be moving in a moment. This one should be moving in a moment. This one should be moving. What are you waiting for? Oh, I see. There's way too big of an intersection here. Um, I think I've retired this entire section, so I should probably get rid of it now. That might help. Coal liquefaction could maybe be moved as well. Why is our artillery... oh. Wait, where is our artillery train? It came to the wrong... How did... Did I tell it to go to the wrong stop? That doesn't seem too likely. Okay, stop. Turn around. There you go. And over here, please. Fantastic. Um, so yeah, that train did get through there. I don't understand why I don't see them using this as a shortcut. And shelling continues. Wait, what? Where are you going? Okay. That wasn't the biggest threat. The station there adds a thousand tiles worth of path. Okay. So if we just do the same thing but without the station, they're going to stop having to go around this way. It's not the most efficient use of shells, but it's very easy. I think I can... Oh! I almost forgot about the biter counterattacks. The 1k may not be the right number, it's 500 or 1000 or 2000. The effect is the same, I get it. Oh, more ice. I, f I keep forgetting the um, prior gun spits out what well, leaves ice on the ground. Let's do a deconstruction planner for that. If I can find it. Wait, can I not... Ice. You can't place ice as like a building, so I can't do a deconstruction planner for just this. That's unfortunate. Ouch. 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 
Yeah, get that precious ice. Much more important than repairing the um, laser turret, apparently. Yoink. Use the item on ground from the special tab. Uh, let me have a look. Item on ground. Oh, there we go. Fantastic. All right, and go. Go, go. Yeah, there we go. Here comes some more friends. Oh, did we run out of targets? We did, and we've got 16 shells left. Fantastic. Decon Planner has the best filters, just have to know where to look. Yeah, definitely. All right. Are we just about done with the counterattacks? That might be a spawner, I don't think it is. Oh, hello. is quite a lot of range we have from here. One, two, three, four. Where else can we get maximum value? Let's just check we're not under attack, run out of ammo anyway. We've probably, well, if I don't mind setting up a wall that doesn't bring us the coal, we've, we could probably get started already, but, uh, we're really struggling for coal, so I'd kind of like to do that. I suppose when it comes to core mining fragments that give maximum oil, um, it might actually good, be a good idea to process them here. Or now that I think about it, that could be applied for every core fragment. Okay, where is Artie? Still getting filled up with shells. There we go. Come back here, please. And I just want to double check. That is definitely the correct fort. Okay. Have a productive night. I'm wiped from this weekend. Going to sleep. All right. Take care, Nairon. Thanks for dropping by. Have a good one. And, uh, I guess let's go tidy this up a bit while we wait for the train. Oh, hello. 
may I interest you in splitting yourselves up and making yourself easier for the turrets to deal with? There we go. All right, what else have we got going on over here? I think I would like to focus up this direction and try getting the wall started. At least a little bit. Because parts of it are going to be a bit slow to build. This is a good opportunity as well to try uh, building a drop-off, a multi-drop-off for these things from scratch and seeing if we can do better. Let's go a little bit faster. Was that a worm? That was a worm. And these ones I'm not so concerned about. Let's check down here. I guess I finished those ones. There we go. If the artillery supply to the walls was working properly, these wouldn't be here. I think I would like to set up the Arty train as a courier for ammo, since it's more than twice the density of a cargo wagon, for shells specifically. That's a lot of biters. Okay. I guess I got some laser upgrades since I've done this because I do not remember eight personal laser defenses being that powerful. Oh yeah, that's much better. The main thing is how long they take to kill the behemoth biters. The rest are kind of negligible. I guess I'm getting a bit low on uh, laser power, I should probably go back. Okay. 
Okay. Is turret back? Good. Um, these little bases I can probably handle myself. Although, if I leave them, they might grow. Let's go back to base, recharge, and let the artillery do its thing. Okay, don't need to kill that. Um, is there anywhere that I should start with, or I guess it doesn't really matter. Let's pick a densely populated spot so we hit as much as possible. Can we hit all three? Maybe that's a bit too greedy. We'll see what's left. After the shells arrive. Maybe I should just spend that time targeting another base. Okay. Here. Here. That might be too greedy. And one... Is that, is that a spawner? I don't think it is. That should be everything. Don't really have any visitors yet. One, two, three. And here they come. I've got less than a stack of repair packs, I should probably go get some more after this. Steel walls are so strong. I think we can give a bit more attention to targeting.
That's pretty effective. Twenty six shells remain. That's uh, just worms. One, two, three, four. All right, that might be everything. Nice. So I think once we run out of ammo and the counter-attack stop. We'll take a little break from killing fighters. We're almost like a third of the way done clearing this out as well. Assuming we don't take too long to do it and the biters keep expanding, which they will, Maybe I should move the fort. We could do that. It's a really good spot with these cliffs, but uh, it's not that important. Oh, I left my rover port on. Don't die, bots. Rip. Okay. Artillery is gone. One more attack is coming at least. That is a lot of biter spawners. Alright. Looks like it's just this one group. Yeah, I think it might be easier to move the fort forward rather than manually targeting all of this. I don't know. Okay, these guys are taking their sweet time, so maybe I'll... Oh, there they are. Whoops. Well, that'll help. Okay, so I think it's safe to go back for supplies. I might make a separate drop-off station for regular wall supplies and artillery shells uh, with the next wall. Why do I keep hearing a sound as if I'm walking on the ground? That is a little bit odd. Let's go a little bit faster. And we're back.
How are our resources looking at the main base? We've got at least five trainloads of iron, so I think we're doing fine. Yeah, we're fine. Fantastic. Don't really want to be carrying extra solar panels and accumulators. Uh, what else? I mainly just want to get this wall built, as far as Nalvis is concerned. Uh, the sushi belt is... Oof. Looking a bit more full than I thought, actually. Um... How much have we got of everything? We've got... 2.7 times as much iron as we would normally put here, but I think I may have overestimated how much can fit over here. So why don't we drop this down to like a hundred of each thing? until we know how much we actually need. Okay. Everything resupplied. The longer I wait on continuing with the shelling, the more effort it's going to take overall. Let's get it done now. wait for the train here. Okay, speed run. Can I set up a bypass before that train gets back? Maybe not. Nope. That's fine. So that goes there, this goes here, and that should do it, I think. Stage train needs to be able to leave this one in this direction. Yeah, that should be it. All right, let's head back for now. Did I actually beat the train back here? Did it get stuck? I don't see that big red circle anywhere. Oh, it's here. Wait, did it sneak in here while I wasn't looking? No? I... I'm so confused. It's probably fine. Okay. Auto-firing on some expansion bases. Sure, why not? Um... 
I actually think I should clear up, clear out the biters up here and get the wall started. Otherwise, we're just going to get expansions coming in all day. So maybe we'll start with this. We will have to deal with a couple of attacks uh, sort of coming in from the side. But maybe that's better than having to clear this out like two and a half times, basically. As soon as they finish doing their counterattacks, I'll go and tidy up what's left up here. Is that too greedy? Maybe. Okay, they're probably probably about to attack us. Yeah, there we go. Lasers. Um, and away we go. Robo go, Robo stop. We've only got three shells left, may as well use them now. Uh, one, two, three. anymore. Just a little bit. Oh. Um. That's more than a little bit. That is a snake and a half. Well, I'm pretty sure that's going to be the last of them for this, uh, this set of biters. Nope, I'm wrong. Here comes some more. Hmm, I didn't realize the coast was here. Uh, I don't think that necessarily changes my plan. I do want to know where it goes, though. It keeps going a long way. So it's not like we're going to cut this off and then, well, let me not 
get too distracted before the spider army arrives. Might be a good idea to lure them. Might be a very good idea to lure them. Now it's the spitters I'm more worried about. Well, that was quick. Okay, so I want to see if it would be better to build the wall a little further out. That's iron. It's only 1.9 million, but nothing to scoff at. Especially for iron on this planet. Okay, so if we could build the wall here, it doesn't actually make that much difference, except that it'd be a bit less awkward finishing it up here. Uh, 20 million stone. Stone is the last resource that we have any trouble with, though. Mr. Gecko, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Alright, in the meantime, let's get our artillery trained. We've run out of artillery shells. How... How do we have zero, though? What's going on with artillery shell production? No explosives. No coal. No coal? Okay, that's kind of alarming. Um, coal? There's coal here. What? Waiting for source items. Oh. I am very confused. Okay, so they're not putting coal in these chests because there's more than 8,000 in the logistic network. The buffer chests are set to request... Uh, that's actually two chests worth of coal, but that shouldn't matter. We've got coal in storage somewhere, but for some reason we're not... Is it because we're Putting all the coal in... No? Where... Where is our coal? I am so confused. Oh, here... Here is some coal. Okay, so that is... 48... 96,000. Um... I mean, 9.6 thousand. Okay. Let's just say 20k. There we go. Not doing unwell, I don't think. Good. Could be mistaken. Circuits are wonderful at screwing up the base. <laughs> yes. 10 out of 10. Okay, while we wait for that to sort itself out, let's go hit the remnants of this massive biter base. Look at all that delicious iron. And I think the more I look at out here, the more I think maybe I would like to build another outpost before we try building the wall. Maybe I should design a wall segment that can defend itself in all directions. I mean, technically the one that I've... The, the latest version I've made can do that. It's just not very good at defending itself from behind. Hmm. 
That is a lot of noise. Okay. And again. Iron Man for the win? Yes. Okay. That is a lot of big worms. I'd be in trouble if they still had those homing boulders. Or at least I wouldn't be able to kill them quite so quickly. Flying around, zapping things in flight? Yeah, the jetpack does go a long way. Oh, there's a big base over there still. And we didn't actually finish destroying this one. Let's back up a little bit. Let the biters come to us, and then we'll go snipe the spawners again. I guess the damage upgrades for the laser turrets make them more energy efficient as well. That's good. So many spitters. I mean, worms. That should make it a bit easier. Okay, this is taking a little bit too long. They've probably made some expansion bases by now. And we're kind of aggroing that base up there. How big is it? Okay, it's very big. Yeah, we're not going to attack that. Okay. I might just set our... We're at 33%. I might just set our artillery train to come over here once it's full. And let's have a bit more of a browse down here. 
I'd love to see something to motivate me to build the wall a little bit further out. Copper. Six million copper. That's definitely something. Okay. So I'm thinking... A, oh, that's iron. And that's oil. Okay, so maybe here? That's not quite getting the copper, but... I don't know how badly we need it just yet. Coal and uranium. We will have artillery on this wall, so we could easily go a bit further next time. In any case, we'll have to build a little wall over here, and one over here. If we build one here, we don't get the coal. Maybe I'm being too greedy. If we just build it from here down south. No, we really do need the coal. Hmm. Okay. We'll build the wall after the first bit of coal. And then if we want to expand more, we'll use the artillery. Which means right about here is where we want to build it. It takes up about as much space as I expected. Um, technically, we should cover this part as well, I guess. I hope I don't have to destroy those cliffs. They look pretty useful. What if we do it from here? That is... Okay, we'll do it just barely in front of the coal. Why not? Which means we have to build from here. Okay. You can never be too greedy. Well, I mean greedy in the sense of, like... Uh, if you ever watch someone play a card game. They might talk about being greedy. Trying to take too much all at once. Okay. Train still isn't here. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. 61%. That's what we get for only having one uh, explosive machine. Maybe we should... We're already delivering explosives over here. What else? We need explosives, um, steel and plastic, radar. Yeah, it's a bit of a pain to build these anywhere other than... Steel plastic explosives. Okay. Steel plastic explosives and radar. Radar is four more things. It doesn't make a ton of sense to build a... Well, I've done it before. I could build an entire rail block just to make artillery shells. Um, I don't really feel like we need that kind of pace just yet, though. Or more to the point, I don't quite want to spend that much time on it at the moment. But... It shouldn't be too difficult, either. Especially since we've done it before. Okay, maybe we could get this wall started, and then we'll look at that production stuff. Uh, let's let's make a start. 
The only trouble with these tiered designs of this wall is if I lay them out from here to measure where it needs to go, um, we're going to have some problems. Well, the RoboPort is the part that sticks out this way the most, so that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so what if we start, like, here, just a little bit in front of me? Final product is going to look like this. Um, do one more little unit on the right over there. Let's turn off... Okay, make sure Robopot is turned off. And I would like to place this right about here. Make sure it doesn't delete some of that cliff. Petchy, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Also, RPHL Streams, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, does this... Is this too far to the east? Whoops. Let's line it up. If we can. There we go. Oh, biters are coming. Better hurry up. That... Yeah, we need to go like... Four or five tiles. Okay. So right about here, maybe? Let's see. That's good. All right. So the RoboPort is going to be just in front of that cliff. Why is that blocked? It's just a tree or something. Yeah, just in front of that cliff. Okay, cool. Let's start with the most basic version that can actually defend itself. And do not destroy the cliff, please. Maybe the trees. Might have to add a bit of wall up here. And I think all of the power switch stuff goes in front of these ones. Yeah, so that'll always be powered. That should be fine. We'll need a rain station to drop stuff off. A couple, actually, probably. That is... Well, there's no reason to preserve the cliff behind the wall. So I'll probably do it something like this. How about... here? Um, I wish I could mark certain things as just planning so the robots don't build them, but I guess we'll just have to go for it. Okay. We'll need a... Maybe I should just put this straight over here, actually. Uh, one more RoboPort isn't going to hurt anything. Let's do a logistic train stop. 
some active provider chests. And we need to know what's in the robo net, uh, in the logistic network. We also need to. Let's do it over here. We need to be able to insert directly into RoboPort. Um, set filters. Wait, what? Oh, I see. Read robot statistics. Of, let's say, total logistic bots. 100, and total construction bots. I'll make it more like 500 each, why not? So we're going to set filters blacklist, and we'll also give this a negative signal. So we'll go just over 500 for each of these. Um, other than that, should I just blacklist robots going into here? That would be the simplest solution. It'll take a little bit longer to unload though because we need two filters. Coronal mass ejection headed for Mars, 11 minutes. There is nothing we can do about that, and not a whole lot that we need to protect over there. Getting pretty far now to transport materials? Yeah, a little bit. That's true. Okay, I think I would rather just... Do a simple solution that's definitely going to work here to start with, and we can maybe improve on it later. Uh, we'll get our list of things that we normally want at the wall. Um, 100 shells, why not? Is there a way... Hmm. If I use the encoded network IDs, I could have it so that only artillery trains are used to pick up from this station. If it was an LTN stop. But then I would have to... Because the default is to be on every network, I would have to go to all of the other wall stops and tell them that you're on network something or other. That's a pain. So I could just set this as... I wonder if I could have this function as a vanilla stop at the same time that it's functioning as an LTN stop. So this could be artillery shell drop off. And no, I think if we have an enable condition, that's going to stop LTN from sending trains here. Yeah, I think it's simpler to just have a separate stop for the artillery train. And we can just keep that one vanilla. Unless we want to go to the trouble of changing the encoded network ID for every one of these uh, stations so that we don't have the regular trains interacting with them. Um, let's 
do it like this. I guess stack inserters don't matter for artillery shells. So I'll change that name to whatever. Pancake? Is it me or can I not hear T hacks? Can you not hear T hacks? Hey Gek, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I see it is you. Okay, good. As long as it's working. And on. It's you. Okay, cool. So we're going to take artillery shells from the artillery wagon. It's going to give us one more station we can click on to find this thing as well. Where is Artie? Oh, it's still over here. Okay. So, pick up. Drop off. Uh, I guess wait for inactivity. We don't necessarily want it to wait till it's empty. And that should be fine. Okay. So we'll want to read from the logistic network. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of this and change it to negative. We'll just use an arithmetic combinator times negative one, output each, and then connect that to here, and compare it to what's in the logistic network. Uh, I need another substation over here. That is tragically close. Um, I guess we'll use a big pole first. So what I'm thinking is we read the logistic network contents, uh, subtract how much we want of each of these resources, and on the constant combinator, that talks to LTN, uh, we'll say provide threshold a million, and that way LTN isn't going to think it can pick up items from here, even if we've got a lot of something. So this goes here, and should. Oh, we've got no electricity. Yeah, that makes sense. Alright, please place some more solar panels. Stream on second monitor at work is a lifesaver though. Like, to your sanity? I have no difference between any day of the week, so I do not understand. JK, hope your Monday is good. Rip. It's Monday, what do you think? How y'all doing? Maybe I should try not to read chat backwards. Why is this not getting removed? Oh, it's doing that thing where all of the bots are waiting on some other bot that doesn't exist to pick up the trees. Two exams this week, so I could be better. Rip. Also helps when the one exam we know what we are doing. Helps when the one exam we know what we are doing. The one exam you have is the one that you're confident in? Question mark? Uh, I definitely need to run power back here. 
as much as this uh oh um lasers done there we go as much as this is built to be self-sufficient um more power is better we have the whole semester writing <laughs> okay uh weirdly enough we will actually have to connect this rail to the rest of the world before we can get a train over here i'm surprised ltn hasn't scheduled something oh did i hold on settings mod settings i did want to try this we're changing the default request and provide threshold to a million that should prevent um surprise scheduling but yeah i am surprised we don't have a train trying to be scheduled to come here yet it's probably because this combinator doesn't have enough um enough electricity all right let's do something about that shall we Come on. There you go. Good bots. Come on. Oh boy, that's going to be a pain. Uh, let's just do this. It might be a little slower, but it's going to be a lot easier. So I'm happy I was done with school like 23 years ago. <laughs> Traumatic. This is hopefully my last 10 days of uni if I pass. Nice. If I fail some modules, then I have part-time uni. Oh. Please do not... There we go. Uh, that's not what I wanted to see. No random, random real. Okay, let's uh, fix this. That should do it. Go back and get this rail. And not this tree. Okay. That should be straight through. And then we can move it straight through that. Oh, the coronal mass ejection is occurring. Looks like it's going to miss. Is there really just one of them? Or I think there's going to be two more. Oh, they're down here. Yeah, that's probably not going to hit anything. Pr probably. Well... That was a bit anticlimactic. Okay, it is heading alarmingly close to heading straight for the base, but it's only got two minutes to live. I don't think it's going to get there. Let's place a bit more rail. Yeah, it missed. All right, and let's connect this up to the main network. In 
we go. Did that really just barely not line up? No, I think it might line up. Perfect. Nice. Uh, did I run out of rail? Yes, I did. Okay. Put a gate? Yeah, I guess. Can you stop taking gate out of my inventory? I'm trying to place ghosts. How dare you? Okay. I need more rail. Just a little bit more rail. That's a little sad. Whoops. Don't drop out of the sky. And... I think my default request for rail will be more than enough. Let's just wait. And I don't see anything getting destroyed here just yet, so that's good. I should probably increase the amount of uh, solar panels in that base design. Like minimal design. Oh, it's getting attacked. That's not great. Can we speed this up a bit? And the bots are all going in random direction with the rail that I, I was supposed to get. Come on. Oh, this is painfully slow. I should have just picked it up. All right, that'll do. There goes a leg. Go, 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 go. I heard a worm. I'm surprised how long it takes to shoot one of these, even with uranium rounds. I guess I should have equipped the lasers. Alright, let's go. And... A little bit more solar. Oh, that is nowhere near enough. Oh, it's because it's charging roboports. Yeah, once those hit 100%, this is enough solar. But they're taking their sweet time getting there. Do you have a flat solar panel wall design? Uh, no. Okay, um, let's go finish that rail and get a train coming over here. Oh. I guess there was some rail over this way? Oh, we do... I thought so. We do get rail put into the robo-networks over here. So that's good. Uh, let's make this a high priority. Since we're doing an expansion right now. Uh, small train. One at a time. Priority. Oh, this is provide. Uh, I need to request. Oh, that's right. I was setting it to make sure it's not providing. 
uh, request threshold, let's just say 10. Um, request priority 1000. And yeah, we're still not fully charged, so electric. Oh, we're, we're almost there. Okay. Accumulators start to charge soon. Those are more biters. How dare you. I need lasers. I... I do wish when I touched the ground it wouldn't take away my UI when I'm trying to swap all of those items. That wasn't so bad though. We've got some lasers that are active. Is this... I thought I experimented with this and confirmed that it was just enough solar, but considering the fact that the lasers are fully charged, I don't see why we're not getting that last 1% of charge on the roboports. How is it we're holding at Fully charged lasers and... Oh, here we go. We're finally gaining accumulator charge. Fantastic. And that means this uh, combinator is going to do its job. Each. Now we're sending negative signals to LTN. Um, is this working? Yes, good. Train length 3 only, request threshold is only 10. Um, we should be getting a delivery here. Priority is very high. Do we not have a train available? We do not have a train available. What are you trying to do? You're a vanilla. Do I just need more small trains? Yeah, you're going back to depot. Okay. So now we should see a delivery after about five seconds. And... Oop! I was just about to say, and nothing. Alright, is it you? It is you. You are picking up many things, including 11 artillery shells, oddly enough. That that seems very oddly specific, considering we're asking for a hundred. We're asking for a hundred and ninety. Oh, we've got two repair packs here. Okay, I was going to say, why, do, why are we asking for a hundred and ninety-eight repair packs? Fair enough. I didn't realize it would count the repair packs that were in here. That's fine, I guess. Well, if that's the case, we should probably ask for more than 200. Make it like 400. We also need some light oil delivered here. Um, I wonder if, okay, first of all, we need power from the main network. Let's do that. And I've got some bots doing the, the thing again. Come here, you. Okay. Away we go. is actually kind of long. And is that connected to everything? It looks like it. Fantastic. Let's get a radar over there so that we can see what's going on and easily see if it's powered. Uh, 
That is a bit more laser than we need. Let's go a bit faster. Okay. One radar. And then... That's good. I should probably set up a power switch so that this thing gets priority. I'm wondering where that train is at this point. Oh, it's not receiving everything it needs. It's just waiting on artillery shells. Filters... 10, deliver, 0. Do we not have enough shells? We probably don't have enough shells. Here is one. It's going to the usual place. Despite my best attempts, people still insist on using that RoboPort design for solar, ignoring its issues for convenience. Do you mean like a solar design where you have RoboPorts in the middle so it builds itself? Yeah. It does add up to a lot considering the minimum consumption for each one is 50 kilowatts. It's a bit less than a solar panel during the day. Not to mention it costs 4x4 four four space. You could design a, um, a solar with RoboPorts in the middle that you can swap out when you're done and end up with a good ratio. But considering you have Spidertrons, I don't really see the point at this stage. Although we don't have Spidertrons right now because space exploration puts them a lot further into the research uh, tree. Nobody read the post saying that the design only works as intended once you remove the RoboPort and replace with accumulators. Oh, okay. Well... I guess you... Did, did you put it in the description? If you don't remove the RoboPort and replace it with accumulators, the design does not have enough. Like, uh, not enough to sustain itself, or not enough for a good ratio? I, I presume the, la the latter, right? The original Factoria forum post from Madzuri that created it. Okay. Where be our train? Still waiting on a handful of artillery shells and 50 radars. Why do we not have 50 radars? Are we not requesting radars over here? We definitely are. There's radars in here. Yeah, we're just, we're just doing shells at the moment. So as soon as we get three more shells, it's gonna, it's gonna come over here. But all of the shells are getting sent to, uh, why don't we just do this for a moment? And then undo. And there we go. All loaded. A good was that design will have extra accumulators, not extra solar panels. He had that discussion a few times with Zuri, and he said he didn't care. People didn't read a post. That was their fault for not... If you're four accumulators short, the actual answer is paste my blueprints. <laughs> Just overkill it. Oh, paste more blueprints. Hey, Sir JMO. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And fat boy, not so slim. And I think I said the West dude, but either way, welcome, welcome. Alright. So we should be bringing robots as well. Yes, good. This should have everything we need to 
start building the wall automatically. I noticed. JMO, he's still using... Still isn't using your miners. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a lot of robopods. Out of... <laughs> wow, okay. I see how it is. Uh, it does take a minute to unload with, uh, with only a stack size of two. Maybe I should go to the trouble of... Actually, normally I would say an infinite blacklist circuit, but... Wait, yeah, I do know how to do that here. So we need to read the train contents. Um, how do we do it? So we need to have... Read the train contents, give it to this as a whitelist, and give it a big negative number for each type of robot. That's actually really easy. Um... So we'll remove this, put this here. Um, I've gotten in the habit of using red wire here, so why not? Set filters. Uh, read train contents. And then all we need is a, combi a constant combinator to say... Not robots. Set filters whitelist, read train contents, negative big number for bots. And that's it. Removing just the robots is easy. Yes, indeed. We'll clean up all the trees and rocks from everywhere. Such disrespect, not even using compound miners. Yeah, uh, getting rid of the stuff that we don't want here is fairly easy as well. Um, we can basically make a requester chest for everything that isn't on the approved list. And then we have a vanilla train stop called Trash Pickup uh, that is only active if there's something in this chest. We need two chests here because, unfortunately, you can't set requests and read contents on the same chest. Um, may as well put that one here, I guess. Or here, doesn't really matter. Um, you're still at the station. Okay. How about you come home for now? And why are these... Oh, that's right. Stack filters don't matter for artillery shells. Okay. Those are biters. We're not quite ready for biters yet. We also need uh, some ammo for the flamethrower turrets. So let's do something about that. Okay, we are a little bit ready for the biters. Some walls would be nice. Do we, did we not bring any walls last time? We did not bring any walls. Okay. That's cool. I guess I'll make these steel walls ahead of time. Actually, I can't remember if I got rid of walls as part of this pickup station. I did not. Okay, we're fine. Chat demands compound miners. Do they though? Okay, that should help. Bonk? 
All right, and nope. we'll do some spiked steel wall up here as well. And then Beldak says no. <laughs> All right, that should be fine. I'm actually curious to see how strong this wall is, just in its minimalist form. Um, we need fuel. I would like to set it up so that we can use the same LTN stop. So why don't we do it like this? Up, go here. And uh, one thing I failed to consider building this design is where do we connect the pipes from up here? I didn't really leave any room. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. SE already has bigger mind. <laughs> Okay, so I think we want to connect to this one. Let's check. It's going to look like this. Yeah, that'll be right. Except there's nowhere left for the pipe to get through. We're just going to have to miss an accumulator or something in this area. That'll be fine. So then, like so. And we also need to request uh, and measure light oil. Okay, uh, light oil. Nope. Nope. Chat, <laughs> Chat demands compound miners. Nope. All right. Uh, light oil. Let's just say, uh, like 40,000. The, except the request threshold of 10. Okay, we need to set this to like 25,000. Or slightly less. If we're below 24,000 light oil, even by only 10, uh, it may send us a fluid train. We've got room here for 50k, so that should be fine. And don't forget to put this here. <laughs> okay. I think... We're sending items here pretty quickly, actually. Except we keep waiting on the artillery shells. Um... I definitely think I should stop using LTN to send artillery shells here. So let's do this. And, oh, speaking of shells, we got them. Um, I do need to set a, some kind of condition. Let's just do this. And... Enable, disable. Hmm. Yeah, no, that should be fine. Enable, disable. Artillery shell is less than... I don't know, less than 100. One train load. Train limit one. That'll be fine. So if there's a hundred uh, artillery shells in the logistic network, we won't send a train here. That seems good to me.
Meanwhile, I think we've got... Oh, is it already building out here? Oh, that's jumping the gun. Uh, I did not realize that would happen. Okay. I forgot how far ahead of where we are up to I put the... Ghosts. Okay, I need some... I need some armor. Some shields. Don't kill all the bots, please. No. Please stop. It's me you want. Ouch. Okay. Alright. That's alarming. We're gonna aggro that entire... That entire base. Um, I'm a little concerned. Maybe... Okay, I know what to do. Um, let's get our artillery train. Send it to the fort. Um, until empty, perhaps. We'll get the artillery train to attack this. It'll send the biters at the fort. Remind yourself that Overreach you did? Yes, indeed. Killer. I didn't realize uh, the auto-building would be this fast. Let's uh, give him a little hand, I guess. If they insist. Okay. At least we didn't try to build it straight into their base. Build the wall faster, we must. Okay. Uh, so I think this whole thing is... No, that's fine. Okay, so the artillery train should be arriving over there. I was going to say relatively soon. Oh, you're using the bypass, and you're all waiting for something? The right-of-way in Factorio with the trains is... seems very random sometimes. Okay, now you can go up here. Alright, so the train is coming. Um, the rate we're going, we may as well upgrade this. Do I have anything between... uh-oh. Well, that should be fine, actually. Yeah, it can handle that. Um, I've got this. And then the same thing with more solar panels. And then everything except for artillery. Okay. Why don't we just go straight to the everything except for artillery. Except don't kill the cliffs. Don't need that. Artillery train has arrived. Let's get it to send our friends over to the east. Um, they are going to go east, right? Right? Yes? That was, that was a little bit scary. That was more than a little bit scary. Okay, 
let's hit some more of this bonus. Pretty close, yeah. I should definitely go and support the fort as well. I think as long as the wall doesn't get attacked from the wrong angle, it can handle itself. Uh, as long as I'm slightly ahead of them, I'll split them up. This is fine. Yes, indeed. Okay. Need to add some radars as well. I don't think the substations stick out at the back at all, so there's nowhere to naturally place the- Whoa! Okay. Alright. Any more? Nope, I think we're good. All right, let's continue. It's probably better if we can get uh, both bases to attack us at the same time. Get the maximum value out of the flamethrowers. That's all the spawners. Okay. And this one? Feeling very confident. Did we click these ones? Yeah, I just wasted a shell, I think. That looked like it came from somewhere else. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Yes, indeed. That's weird. I heard the sound before I see it in chat. Big holes? Yes, indeed. As long as we're here to... help manually, um, we should be able to manage it. Split them up. Repair the lasers. Roboports go. Roboports stop. They really wanted that radar. <laughs> okay. And 
bunk. The bunk came through immediately in chat. I wonder how... Why don't I see who did the overconfidence? Huh. Okay. Let's make sure there aren't any more counterattacks coming. Seems okay. Should probably hit these ones while we're at it. Permit, please. It with a, a stealth confidence. One moment. Uh, one, two, three. Permit. Almost posted link without permission. Twitch disconnected you from chat? What? Huge time saver. Artillery bombardment remote? That's the one Mucky uses, right? Yeah, I was considering it. Wait, can you get it to target just spawners? Don't really have time to look right now. Actually, let me check. Do we have a decent sized attack coming? Yes, I've got a few seconds. Waste less ammo, it targets one shot at the center of every biter structure. That's not that efficient. Uh oh. But it is a time saver, definitely. It's the one everyone uses. I think we talked about this mod yesterday. Probably. I was shelling biters yesterday. Okay, are we done with those attack waves? Yes. Not quite. But that one's not coming just yet. Let's try and get the most out of our shells. That should be almost all of them. Oh yeah, we are getting shells from the wall. There you go. I'm surprised how much range they have. How many more have we got here? 20. Let's go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. What? Oh, it's the one. All oh, right, I thought there was more chat. It was just the bot. Okay. That's a decent sized wave. Did we actually lose? Yeah, we did. One second. Okay. Let's just double check. We don't have any more waves coming. Uh, we very ha very much have more waves coming. Why did I think otherwise? Let's finish off the ammo that we've got. And that should probably be all of it. Yeah, that's definitely all of it.
I am liking the stationary stationary artillery including uh, included in the walls. Even just having a few that I threw in there, let alone have them included in the blueprint. Uh-oh. Nope. Didn't mean to have my robopod on there. I think I didn't realize how big that wave was. Okay. I think we're... Pretty much good for now. E well, it put them all in one place. Oh, did we lose the power pole? We did. Oh, that's just to this little outpost self sufficient, just as well. Okay. They're still coming. I thought I saw more down here. I think that was just a shadow from the radar. Okay. Now, are we done? I think so. Let's go check on the wall. And I should really add some more radar up here so I don't need to do this manually. Let's see. In the final version, I'm pretty sure there's no power sticking out over here. I could be wrong. Let's see. Oh, is that... That's perfect. We can put radars in here. Fantastic. Alright, so that's gonna go... Right about here. Now we can see all of it. Could you stop spitting at my wall, please? That is a lot of worms. And biters. Just about done with the worms, yes. Oh, I didn't realize I had these bots flying around. Come here, please. There we go. Seems we can expand our wall a bit. 
relatively easy to figure out how to line this one up. Got to make sure that that base is gone by the time the wall gets here. Why do I have bots flying again? How did this happen? Okay. I should really keep an eye on whether my robot board is turned on or off. Alt-G? What's that? Cannot connect rolling stock. Yeah, it's Alt-R. Um, but I just forgot to turn it off. I thought that was RoboPort active on and off. I think... I can't remember if it's, if it's default, but Alt-G is like... There's a couple of... In, uh, there's a couple of um, inputs that let you connect or disconnect train parts to each other. And I'm guessing this is a pretty normal, pretty common experience, but usually I'm only reminded that those exist when I accidentally press them uh, in a context where it actually connects or disconnects a piece of train. And then I have to flounder around trying to figure out what button it was. Okay. Did I leave anything but spawners here? I mean, anything... Did I leave any spawners here? And... I guess there must be shells over this way. There's only one here. And one here. Okay, that's not that many. Um, one, two, three, four, five. I don't really need shells to kill such small bases, but it does make it easier. No artillery within range. All right, there we go. That remain, reminds me I need to disable that button on my keybinds. I can't imagine I'll ever want to disconnect rolling stock. Yeah. I only get annoyed by the prompt coming up. This is not the time to use that here. <laughs> Maybe if you could... What if you could automate connecting and disconnecting rolling stock? Would there ever be a reason to do that? I guess you could, like, have cargo wagons already full of things and, like, put a bunch of them together to fill an order. I don't really see it happening. There's a mod for that? Ask Toothy. Okay. These are some big biter bases. So... It might be better... Okay, this only reaches to here. But other than that, it's probably better to... Wait for artillery shells at this wall. Um... That's what we're always waiting on at this station. I could probably improve on that. Hmm. I kind of want to deprioritize this one a bit. I guess I could make these green chests. That would actually work for now, because there's only two places that artillery shells uh, get taken in this robot network. So yeah, that's actually going to be all it takes. Cool. So we'll use... Uh, 
we'll use this wall to do the artillery as much as possible because we know that that can defend itself without me doing anything. And then there'll be like a little bit more left over this way, um, which we'll need to bring out the artillery wagon for, or maybe just attack directly. I could change the requests over here to be a little bit more. Maybe 10. Actually, this this turret in particular is closest, so let's just prioritize that one. Made a base where locos would disconnect from their cargo and go deliver other cargo. That sounds cool. I think I'll actually set the requests for this one to be as many as we can fit. And we'll change that when we're done. All of the lights... Okay, not all of the lights. A lot of the power switches are still on. I should probably put on more RoboPorts for now. I don't want to not have lasers ready, though. Oh, it's automatically shooting things. I'm pretty sure there were shells here before, or they were being delivered. Those might... The biters. Nope, we're good. Where's that worm that I heard earlier? There you are. You can stay. You're fine. Um, I think we've overextended a little bit in terms of building speed. This is why we have the smaller version of the wall. Whoops. Still, shouldn't take too long to get done. I wonder if I should ask for more bots. No, I think we're going to end up with haloing. Yeah, we're doing it a little bit already. There's like 10 bots queuing up to get recharged over here. So we're probably pretty close to our limit for how many bots we should have here already. Should I go back and... Oh, the logistic bots are bringing things to me. That's fine, I guess. Still, they're kind of... They're kind of doing jobs by bringing things to me when they could be taking them elsewhere, so... I think I'll go back to base and resupply. Still got no shells here. I guess that means this thing still had more auto-targets. Yeah, we're only bringing a few shells at a time anyway by not having a dedicated station for the shells. 
I think this design is much better. It also leaves a lot more room to bring the other things uh, in the variety train. Okay. Let's go back for resupply. Maybe even faster. I don't think we're going to finish artillery shell shooting speed 2 before we have to intervene in some way. Let's have a look once we get back. Science is... Actually, we have 640 of these left. We need 2,000. I don't think the productivity bonus is going to get us there. 643 times 1.48. 950. That's closer than I thought it would be, though. Um, we're actually only about... Well, without productivity modules, we're a thousand and fifty short. Are we resupplied? Let's go grab some extra lasers, since we need, need those the most. And that, that's a lot of lasers. Wow. Okay, let's go. Are you stuck? Uh, what has happened here? I wonder how that happened. Hmm. I'll have to come back and have a look at that later. It really is a bit more remote than I realized. Okay, and away we go. Whoops. I may have left an alarm on. Ironically enough, reminding me to get ready for stream on a day when I have to do a short stream. This is creating too many bot jobs. Oh well. It'll sort itself out. And I'll grab 50 of these back so the bots don't have to do it for me. Okay. Do we still have no shells here? Really? I guess you're on the way with 33 shells. That's pretty good. Do I want to go to the trouble of setting up a dedicated drop-off for artillery shells over here? I guess. Um, 
don't know if we would have everything we need in the network to build that. So we better go there directly. And just need to put this somewhere in the logistic network. So this will actually be fine. And then... Uh, how do I make this reach? There we go. Read logistic network contents. Artillery shell less than 100. And all of a sudden we have 100 artillery shells on the way. I should have done that a lot sooner. Okay. It's happening. Once we get this iron mine, uh, well, two iron mines actually, throughput issues should be resolved for quite a while, not to mention the coal. Iron and coal have been our main issues for quite a while. Oh, I should make sure this is powered as well. There we go. Yeah, I really like that about putting the artillery in the wall because you can just target things and not even worry about the counterattack. It's just going to be crashing against the strongest walls that you have instead of attacking some little fort somewhere. I suppose you could always make a stronger fort, but then it's sort of more effort anyway. May as well place some of these. Why is that one so long? Well, I guess it's okay. Or did I run that over a gate somewhere? I definitely ran that over a gate. Whoops. Well, that's probably fine. Where's the RoboPort? There it is. So that goes there, and that goes there. Oh yeah, we don't have the gates as often at the back. Okay. Careful. Lots of artillery shells. Fantastic. Let's use them. How much range do I have? Quite a lot. I can almost hit everything we need to to expand to this wall.
want to make sure I get value still. We're not making shells that quickly. Probably gonna run out of shells before we finish off this base. Let's see. We still have 25, and the bots are always delivering more. Actually, I think we're gonna be able to finish most of this off since we know we just got a hundred up here. Should I wait for some of these attacks, or just not do that? Is that... Is that water or land? I think it's land. Let's, uh, let's find out. That's definitely land. Kind of hard to see where the targets are. Or rather, they disappear once a shell has been fired. So unless you have a perfect memory... Oh, there we go, I just wasted one. Rip shell. Those look like spawners. Those are definitely spawners. And more shells. Okay. Let's go get the remainder before they expand. And of course run into some of the counterattacks. Guess we don't need to shell this one. I didn't mean to wake them up. Let's, um... Let's be careful. We're kind of far from the wall. So by the time I pull them there, they're going to be half dead anyway. Uh, QC lover? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. What? 
is... Thanks for the follow. Sound is getting a bit weird. You can go. Oh, there's way more of them left than I realized. Good. Another group of them just sitting around. Can I leave? Nope. There we go. Okay. Let's get a few more shells in here if we can. I think I split them just now because... I saw some of them heading south to form a group. Yeah, that's a bigger group than I bargained for. the end of that base. A few more spawners down here. Let's see how many we can hit with just a few shells. Okay, how's our wall coming along? Mm, better. Oh, oh, no, no. Why is it so hard to get out of the map view? Yikes. Oof. No worries. Nothing bad happened. You can stay. Actually, we're probably going to get our miners spat on. We're probably going to need to remove some of that. Okay, that is a big group. Wow. That's a little scary, not going to lie. How dare you? Oh, not again. Sneaky biters. Let's get this one spawner before we move on. And let's sit on the water. 
so we know we're safe while we view the map. I, at this rate, we're just going to be able to shell all of this before we run out of shells. That's quite good. I'm glad I changed the the supply logistics for the shells. Did I target this one? Apparently not. How much range do we have? We're getting to the edge of it. This is the very edge. Might be able to hit quite a few with that shell. Even more spawners. And... I think we've run out of ammo. Nope, not yet. Oh, I think the one at the bottom has run out of ammo. Yeah, it has. Alright, so... Artillery playtime is over for now. Let's go drop off some resources for the new wall, and we'll head back to base. Right after we've run into some more enemies. Oh, that's an artillery shell coming in. I could have got squished. I'm not sure what's taking it so long. I guess that'll be targeted when the shell arrives, maybe? worried about these worms. Much more concerned about this. So let's see. Solar panels, accumulators, substations, poles, turrets, balls. I kind of wish you could put down a blueprint that says Put stone wall if that's... Uh, put spiked steel wall if we can, otherwise put stone wall and leave an upgrade planner for it. That'd be pretty cool. Um, anything else? Pipe? Sure. And... I know we need some fast inserters. Uh... Don't know why I still have these artillery turrets on me. A few more bots. Actually, there isn't a mechanism to... Oh. Hello. This thing is trying to deliver bots, but... Okay. I guess what we could do... is allow 
putting bots in here. And we'll set up a chest for them. Um, 1200, 1200, and like so. That should be okay. Wait, how are we actually... I think I forgot something. It looks like we're asking for a stack of bots unconditionally. Because this is a reading from... Yeah, let's just add a red wire from here to here. So now we're reading total logistic and construction bots. Um... That's not where that goes, actually. I th think if I just connect this green wire to here, that might cause a problem. We'll do a one-way wire just to be sure. Each times one, output each. Red wire goes here, green wire goes here. So now we've got a positive number for bots. We're not going to have the trains bringing any more after this one. Okay, back to base, I guess. Uh, let's just confirm those are going to get where they need to go. And they'll be put into the robo-network as soon as they're needed. Alright, back we go. Actually, maybe I'll ride the train back. How soon is it getting here? Not soon enough. What's with this traffic? Uh, I see. That should be gone pretty soon. Back you go. There's another small train waiting here. Where are you going? To pick up used fuel cells. Fair enough. I guess we didn't need uh, filter inserters here after all. I'll leave it as is just in case uh, something changes or I change my mind. And away we go. Okay. Did I forget to add gates to this whole thing? Oh, we're, we're actually not requesting gates, so that's the first problem. Let's jump back into the base before we sort that out. So first of all, we have to make a request, and I think we also need to set the pickup station to have gates. So 
So let's, since the bots are busy with me right now, we'll go over with the navigation view and add a request for gates over here. Hopefully that's not going to tip things over the edge to the point where... Nah, we're, we're okay. Okay. Seems like we are resupplied. Should I take some more lasers over there? It seems like we're okay for lasers, I'm not sure. Uh, it would be good to place another radar, though. Wait, can I do it by the map like this? Yes. If I use the navigation satellite, I can see the blue on the mini-map that shows the radar range. Is this the new one? No. Nope. Looks like we're managing. Okay, so next radar goes here. And then we should be able to make a blueprint of just the two radars. Snap to grid relative. Subtract this by three, I think. Wait, no, that's not quite right. Okay, create blueprint, and then start again with snap to grid. Oh no. I did that wrong. Uh, what we're going to do is grab the radars, remove everything else, create blueprint. Now we're going to go snap to grid relative. That's going to include both of them. Subtract this by three. And now we have a blueprint that will uh, place the radars for these walls. Okay, so... Radar measured five wall. Seems good. Just have to line this up with the existing radars, which is a little tricky. There we go. All right. So once the wall gets there, it should automatically place radars. I don't know if I included them. I did. Okay, cool. Oh, and I completely forgot, we do already have radars in the, in LTN, so it would be even easier than expected to make a, a shell factory. Let's maybe do that once we're secure. Okay. Do we have some more ammo down here? Yes, indeed. Very much so. I very much like being able to do this with no worries about the counterattack. Is that a spawner? I think so. Now we can see a bit more clearly.
I almost wasted a shell there. I think we can just barely kill that spawner. That one's a bit ambitious. Okay, so for the rest of these we'll need to send the artillery train over here, or we could attack them directly, which with bases of that size would be a bit of a chore. Could nuke them, that's true. Manky kitty, welcome welcome, hope you're doing well. I haven't actually automated nukes this game. We're actually slowly running out of uranium. Um running our nuclear plants and we're not producing it from the core mining as quickly there's 3.6 million uranium here uh, 3.1 over here i think we've actually run out yeah there's almost nothing left from this mine oh and there's like uh something like 500 and 50,000, if that, no, it's less than that, it's like 530,000 here, which we could be mining by now, actually. Maybe I will do that. Oh, I also missed this one. Okay, that's 1.1 million, let's go grab it <laughs> as soon as we've finished with the military stuff for today. Um, I forgot that I am requesting 10 of these. Definitely don't need artillery turrets, usually. Not on my person, anyway. I'm surprised how effective those, uh, little teeth are. Although it's definitely not enough in Rampant, for example. It does seem to confuse them for just a moment. That's a lot of stuff. Rip bots. Still, the wall is quite safe. I really don't use flamers enough. All about the mines and lasers. Uh, flamers are... flamethrower turrets are extremely powerful for this specific use case. They obviously can't do anything about a single biter attacking them. By themselves, that is. We did get light oil up here, right? Oh, no. Oh, no. Why do we not have light oil here? Um, is it because we just keep sending solids? Should I maybe have a different station for the light oil? E that's suboptimal. Um, how about... We do this. Uh, grab a small fluid train. Go pick up some light oil, please. Wait until full. And then go over here. Empty. I think there's only one station called a wall. Yeah, there is. Okay, cool. Uh, 
defense in depth for the win. You know, I've seen this sort of thing with bots dying to literal friendly fire a lot on walls with front obstacles. Yeah, unfortunately you can't... Um, I have thought about a couple of solutions before where, like, we try to keep the bots from activating for, like, a few seconds. Um, obviously it's not enough to just keep them a bit further away. Um, we're already pretty close to the edge of the construction limit there. Um, you can't turn RoboPorts on and off, unfortunately. If you could, we could maybe figure out some circuit logic whereby... Well, since we're detecting biters by energy consumption from laser turrets, we could wait till this gets back to full charge and then activate the bots. However, it might be a bit tricky to come up with some logic for... No, this is an emergency. Actually, do send robots in the middle of the biters attacking. Um... It's tricky. Also, is this bot just sitting here trying to build this? It is. One of them's trying to repair something, I guess? Oh, there it goes. Probably need to remove them from the RoboPorts to stop them from going out, yeah. Yeah, that might work. How do you detect when something needs to be repaired, though? I'm pretty sure there's no way to do that in vanilla. You could detect when the biters are attacking, take the bots out of the roboports, put them back in when the biters are not attacking, but by the time you take them out of the roboports, Probably some of the bots are already going to have been in flight. Turn power off for the RoboPort? That doesn't work because... The bots are already charged enough. Um, that's close enough to the truth. The bots basically have to... They have to recharge before they go back in the RoboPort. You can cheat by, like, uh, cheat just a little bit by picking them up before they recharge at your RoboPort, uh, like your personal one. Whenever you have a bot in your inventory, it's fully charged. But more to the point, the RoboPorts have a giant battery built in. Um, so as soon as you turn this off, the, en the electricity will slowly drain out of it, but the RoboPort will work for a little while. In fact, I think if you place a RoboPort without giving it any power, it starts with just enough power to um, for the bots to do something, or for at least for other bots to come and do something from another RoboPort. Oh, that was unexpected. Well, there you go. So not only do the bots need to discharge, but the ports themselves as well. Yeah, and it takes a while. Um, if we place a new port right here, you can see it's like, what, 5% charged? And it does drain, but like because it's minimum... Okay, okay. do you mind? We're trying to do an experiment. How dare you? <laughs> okay. Uh, you can see when it's idle... It's, it's actually draining so slowly that it's hard to see it happening. It does happen, though. Let's fully charge it to illustrate this a bit better. I think a system that might work... <laughs> Jevador, thank you for the awe. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And Blood Red as well. Also, Manky Kitty, don't know if I said welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. 
Okay, so this is fully charged. Let's remove the power pole. You can see it's all it, it's immediately on yellow with the power bar, but you can maybe if you use your imagination, see one pixel there where it's not fully charged. It actually takes a really, really long time to discharge. So it's definitely going to be way too long for... Oh, just turn off the RoboPort when the biters attack. Have a maintenance timer. When the timer ticks, you add some bots. As long as danger signal equals false. That might work. But then you need to figure out an exception whereby... We really need to repair things right now. And I can't think of any way you could get a signal in vanilla to say as much. Or you could just make it so that... Uh, I don't know. There might be a way. It's pretty tricky. How is our wall going? That actually looks finished. Except for some gates. Did I not add gates to the... Fluid Wagon is still waiting for its turn to get here. Okay, here we go. Gates are approaching. Fantastic. You hand tune the timer until the bots have enough time to repair. Ideally, the wall won't be taking lots of damage. Even if it is, um, it might be a worthwhile endeavor. Like, playing against Rampant, um, we were just constantly losing bots all the time. Okay, so... Wait a sec. Did I... That's the wrong station. Okay, no, we've got no fluid here still. I was gonna say, I thought I set up... Because it's LTN and it's going back to the depot, it should clear this schedule as soon as it succeeds. As soon as it gets back to the depot. And away we go. In vanilla death world, I managed to tune the wall design itself to the point where bot death was very infrequent. How so? Do you mean just like the shape of it or like using the advanced stuff that we're talking about? And flamethrower fuel. Fantastic. Okay. That is not in a robo network. Let's uh, make one more little exception over here. The one thing I don't like about this design is. If this power switch has never been thrown, you get the lamps um, flashing, saying they've got no electricity. Messing with turret ranges and obstacle size until damage on the walls is very infrequent. Okay. So most biter waves just go pathing, confused, and didn't attack at all. So there was little to repair. Speaking of which, oh, whoops. Uh, speaking of which, um, since we are detecting the biters to control the power for most of the lasers, uh, we're also turning these gates on and off. 
it's just the first iteration of trying to mess with this, but the idea is... Um, when the biters get close enough, all of the gates shut, and it'll be this these four gates, or these four gates, there should be a nearby gate that is still open. Uh, maybe the biters will stop for a moment and get confused and think about how to path through, because they could still go down here. I'm thinking it's probably... Oh, I see. What if I do this, and then paste this here, and then... Cancel the upgrade. There we go. Instant remote wiring. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, probably we'd need to tweak the layout, but the idea is the biters come in, they think they can go straight through here. Uh, once this accumulator drops low enough that we flick these power switches, the gates all shut, and then the biters probably too far away, the other open gates. Maybe we need to double them. But the idea is the guy, uh, the gates shut on the biters and they immediately go, wait, where am I going? And maybe even just a moment of stopping to figure out how they're going to path might make a big difference. I doubt it, but maybe you could get really cheeky by having gates open and close on a timer or something as well. Um, if you could have a biter going back and forth and back and forth until it dies, uh, that would obviously be... What is this? Uh, that would obviously be pretty effective. Did I copy that mistake anywhere. That is a big lovely tree. Doesn't seem like it. Messing with gates to further confuse the pathfinding sounds like a cool idea. Yeah. Oh, we need to fix this one as well. That group was obviously too small to see it happen. Uh, let's see. Where was that gate? Hold on. Wasn't there a gate with, like... Yeah, here it is. This one. There we go. This would probably be the perfect spot to mess with the gates like that. If biters come from here and there's an open gate, they think they can go straight through. As soon as that shuts, they go, oh, I have to go around. Anyway, uh, our wall is actually completely built as far as it can. Let's get our artillery train. Our artillery train is not full. That is concerning. I should probably stop procrastinating um, building a proper artillery shell build over here. Wait, we have four of these. Oh. Hold on. So we've probably got as many shells as we need over here. Yes. And these are buffer chests, and this is not. Okay. I do wish you could get buffer chests to share between themselves. I wonder if just setting that buffer chest at a lower number would work. Um, but yeah, 84 shells is enough for now, I guess. Let's send you over here until empty. And... 
I missed my chance to ride the artillery train. Rip. Anti did such wall during biter battles. I think it worked on timer and just periodically closed a set of gates while other gates opened. With timer fine tuning, it will confuse biters, but also during biter battles, it cost a lot of UPS due to biters constantly repathing. <laughs> That's how you know it's working. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was thinking about that. If it's on a timer, do we really need... Um, do we need, really need it to respond to the uh, accumulator charge? It's probably good enough. Well, I, I mean, it's definitely good enough. The wall is good enough without the gates. But it's probably pretty good just to have them shut uh, when the biters arrive. Although, probably the nearest open gate is a bit too far away. So they won't... I don't know if they'll try to path all the way down here. We'll see. Oh. I guess we're doing some auto-targeting. And wasting shells on medium worms. Rip. More importantly, we need to hit some of these big bases before we run out of shells. And this one. All right, let's go back it up, shall we? Ever done a train wall? You mean like trains driving around in circles to crush biters? I have not. Uh, Khalid's good jelf. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Is this thing still disconnected? It is. Are you kidding me? Okay, I'd better... Better get it some power in a big hurry. Here we go. I wonder what hit here. Okay. We need one Roboport, lots of lasers, a little bit of jetpack, probably more lasers, and to know when the biters are coming. There they are. That base I can kill with lasers. Same goes for that. This one... ...requires attention. It's gonna be a bit easier now. Here they come. Oh, I left my rover pot on. Nope. Okay, there we go. Did I bring enough repair packs? Yes. Yes, I did. I thought artillery shot automatically at any structure in range. Yes, it does. If you use the artillery targeting remote, um, it has twice as much range. So if you look here, um, automatic range 224 plus 134, manual range is 560 plus 360. 
336. So it has considerably more range with the manual targeting. Of to Silent Techo. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Not so precious with artillery shells. Chuck them out like confetti. Uh, we have finite throughput of iron. What is going on here? Uh-oh. Speaking of which, we've got problems. Too much copper. Can't pick up any other resource. We are destroying... Why is there no copper here? Well, that's going to require attention. Um, that's actually kind of alarming because we're not doing any... What about this side? Same problem? Yeah, I should think so. So we've got way too much copper. Why is copper not getting brought up here? It is being requested. Make sure I turn off my RoboPort for now. Why is copper not being taken to this station? Is this on? Outputting signals, yes. Outputting negative 8k copper. To the logistic train... Stop input. What is happening? Negative 200 priority. This one has the same and it is getting stone sent to it. Wait, don't tell me all of the trains are... Nope, there's plenty of trains in the depot. What could it be? Is that the last counterattack for now? I think so. Okay, let's hit the last few. Also... Uh, speaking of the artillery range and automatic versus manual firing, um, you can just about see the arcs from the artillery range here. If I pick up the artillery targeting remote, you can see it's much, much larger. Um, I believe it's double. It looks like maybe more than double. Let's see. 224 plus 134 is 358. 560 plus 336. I think, I do believe 900 is more than double 400. So yeah, it's more than twice the range if you use the manual targeter. All right, let's finish. What? Oh, it's slightly out of range. Let's finish doing what we can with the shells that we have. That range limit is not at the angle that I thought it would be. Did I target this one? I don't want to go out there to kill that myself. So 
especially not when I'm trying to get a way to fix whatever's wrong with the copper destruction. As soon as the counterattacks here finish, we'll have a, a more thorough look at it. Meanwhile, um, wait, why is this on? Oh, I think I remember. There is a reason for that. Encoded network ID one means that. Uh, we don't pick up from storage. So it's only overflow from storage. But th like when storage is full, we start putting um, copper, for example, into here. Um, I really don't understand why. Okay, we have a pickup. What's this? Copper? Coal. That's going to get things moving at least. There isn't enough to cause a train pickup for any of these other resources. I could change it so that we pick up from this station without having a full train load, but that's only going to shift the problem. We're eventually going to end up with basically nothing but copper in these chests. There's no train stop ID, uh, encoded network ID on these stations. We've seen... We've seen trains pick up from here and go to here before, so I don't understand why... LTN isn't sending copper here. If copper ore is less than 49k, output 1 copper ore times negative 8k. We're requesting... wait, iron? Really? Oh, that's right. We're counting on the negative request priority. Oh, I think I know what the problem is. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I do know what the problem is. Request stack threshold, 160. Give it a few seconds. And, yep. I changed the default request stack threshold to a million. Oh, request threshold to 1 million. So we have to have um, provide and request thresholds at stations to make them work. Uh, this way, if we somehow end up getting a positive signal sent here, like if we were reading from the chests directly and we somehow end up getting like two extra train loads sent here and it overpowers the negative signal to the point where we've got like thousands and thousands of positive copper ore signal going into this uh, train stop. Um, it's not going to think that this is now a pickup station. Um, so yeah, we have to set the request and provide thresholds. What is going on here? That shouldn't happen, even if it is only 160 explosives. Oh well, just go back to the depot. This is a good example of why I recommend having depots that can empty the trains and recycle things back into the system, even though uh, even if you do set up all of your LTN settings so that this, uh, so that they shouldn't end up going back to the depot with items. Oh, now that that's fixed, 
we can focus on military matters. I don't think we're going to cause any more big counterattacks. So let's go tidy up what's left. The blue biters are so cute at this point. I need to go faster. I should probably head straight for the spawners. These are values for arty range, those are just given hard-coded. Research just make them bigger by percentage. Yes indeed. So with before the research you already get more than double the range. Which makes sense. I mean, it makes sense that uh, the ratio wouldn't change after research. It's actually a lot of spawners still, but they're all in one place. Oh, did I get too greedy? A little bit. There we go. I should probably pull out the rocket launcher for this. Oh hey, the spit doesn't uh, stick around on the water, so it does hurt directly, but the main thing, the spit on the ground, doesn't hit me anymore. That's good. How far are you off that spider walker thing? Um, it's a bit more complicated in space exploration than it is in the regular game. I need biological science packs and material science packs, which I haven't made yet. I think I do have them researched though. Yeah, here we go. Um, biological science pack and material science pack. So I've got some complicated stuff to make that I haven't made before. But actually, I'm glad you made me check that because I thought it would be further away. That is definitely a motive to get the space science happening a bit quicker. Alright, let's bring all of our friends over here. And then... Oops. Biological requires vitamelange and material science requires iridium. Okay. I think there's iridium on Mars. I'm not sure. I'll have to double check. I don't know where to get the vitae though. Oh 
almost there. I think that's all the spawners. One more. Cool. Gonna get low on energy by the time we kill these. Vitamiland worlds have biter meteors. Don't be me and visit them without a media defense setup. And wonder why biter spawn, biter spawn within your walls. Wow. Uh, we do have a moon nearby that does biter meteors. I didn't notice if it... I, I don't remember if it has... Uh, I'm just going to call it Vitae. Uh, let's tidy this up and we'll have a quick look. I do want to go back to Moors with a much better hit to set up an infinite supply of, um, well, I guess it's only going to be oil. There's a whole lot of bryonite and iridium on that planet, but, oh, on that moon rather, but it is quite small. It will run out eventually. But what I'm really more interested in from Moors is oil core fragments. It's going to make oil a lot more infinite. Let's see. Biter meteors. We do indeed have Vitemelange. Fantastic. Took me so long to figure out why that kept happening. <laughs> nice. Deep strike biters. Okay, I think we've pushed them back to the choke point down here. This is actually it. We're almost ready to just completely finish the wall. In the end, that came a bit sooner than expected. I kept complaining why my walls didn't work properly anymore, because stuff kept spawning inside. Rip. I kind of wish it was a bit more practical to let meteors through as long as they're going to miss our stuff and then take the resources from them. Okay, I think we're ready. Um, I'm going to hit this little base first. Getting quite low on energy though. There we go. Oh, almost missed a spawner. Or two, actually. It's a very similar color to the ground there. don't even need to kill these ones. Although it will save a few artillery shells later. And then... Let's go. Uh... Definitely glad I at least made an... Out of all these 
maybe unnecessary iterations on the wall. Although, if we start building this wall in an earlier game, it's probably not going to feel anywhere near as unnecessary. But I'm definitely glad I made the version of this without artillery. Because we do not want to use that until we're ready. And it looks like those uh, radars fit in very snugly. That's good. We're also going to need to do some kind of wall over here. I kind of want to use the cliffs, so I think we'll do a custom build here. We'll just do a bit of wall here and over here. Hmm. Maybe even leave a gap here. Yeah. Anyway, we'll leave the wall to build itself for now. Oh, hello. Anything else left over? Train, you can go home, please. And then that choke point up there is on the other side of the wall. We don't need to worry about that. Okay. Oh, we've got trees as well. That is helpful. And it's outside of the pollution cloud. For now. There's also coal and uranium over here. This would have been a lot easier to expand into. Oh well, we need iron. Let's turn on tree x-ray. Um, and I think I would like to minimize the arbitrary killing of these trees. I don't think there's a way to avoid it here. That's upsetting. Okay, that's probably fine. Can I not squeeze this through somewhere? Never mind. Okay, so this is going to go down like so. And we'll do something a little bit similar over here. Actually, I'll just bring them over this way. And then something like this. Very neat. Very beautiful. Okay, we'll add some laser turrets. Uh, let's put some substations first. Can I connect both of these? Yep. Mm, should probably put them a bit back from the wall. Ah, eh, it's probably fine. You can walk across the tiny river straight? What do you mean? Oh. Oh, it's this bit with the sand, isn't it? Um... Huh. That's a bit rude. Well, if the biters want to slow themselves down coming this way, that's fine too. How about we just add 
bit of wall like this. That's probably more than enough. They're gonna naturally be broken up as they come this way. Let's get a Roboport and some more energy. And then over here. That should be fine. Actually, I don't want to kill the trees. Seems unnecessary. Oh, that's all of my lasers. Um, I could make some. Sure, why not? And we'll give it a block of solar to power it. Probably going to need more than this. Twenty seconds. I can't really use my jetpack while that's crafting. Because it'll reset. There we go. I do wish the bots would prioritize the deconstruction if one of them has to hover over something like that. I think I only brought enough for one of these, actually. It's like 100-100. The blueprint is 104 and 86. Well, we'll soon find out if it's enough power. If you're making power just for laser turrets, it makes sense to have extra accumulators anyway. Okay, give it a big power pole, two or three, lasers are on, they're actually fully charged already, looks like we have way more than enough. Okay, that's good. A few more lasers over here. And I think I just reset the last one getting built. Rip. We should probably... Why did these substations not get placed? Let's put this one right about... I don't have bots trapped somewhere, right? Trying to fly back to me. Okay, I think this deserves a little test. 
That should do it. Okay, the spitters are going to cause some problems. More problems than I expected, actually. Oh, no. There we go. We're a bit low in energy also. But it should maybe... Uh-oh. Yeah, we ran out of energy. Other than that, it should be enough to stop any little expansions for now. It's a decent stopgap. Uh, Robos go. It's literally just spitters that makes this a problem. Alright, let's get some more um, solar and stuff. Oh, I wanted to place a radar as well, but I think we'll wait till we get more power first. That's a worm. And back we go. A King Fnub. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay. I can't remember... I guess there's nothing... Okay, yeah, solar. Sure. But other than that... Why is this radar slightly out of position? That's a little upsetting. Uh, let's go fix it. Unfortunately, actually, I think I can go to the map view and then do this. It's only if I want to, like, click on combinators. Oh, there's a radar that's going to get placed here. I think. Is that what that is? Why can't I see it? Because I have to do the navigation satellite and then drag it all the way like this again. Okay. I should probably make a bookmark. Let's do... Is it control click? Uh, control number? Create a new pin. Uh, hotkey... Let's just say control five for now. You all. Okay, cool. Now I can't tell where the. It is. That is a mistake that repeated itself. How did I miss this when I was looking for that? Oh, probably because that was further down. Um, was there a radar ghost over here? Oh, there it is. So, I must have done something wrong here. This radar should be, I guess, all the way up here, or maybe here. And then this one's probably going to be in the wrong place as well. Oh, it's... yeah, I think I know why that happened. Uh, it's probably a peculiarity of 
where the first and second radar was placed. It's not an exact... It's not a multiple of um, uh, the chunk's size. Okay. Are you on the latest slash one of the latest SE versions? I believe it was the second to last one. It now allows you to open the navsat at the current position from the map view. Just press N while on the map. Uh, I should do an update then. I'll have a look at that later. Uh, but yeah, our wall is getting built with surprising alacrity. I should probably take the navsat ahead and cancel some of these cliff explosives actually. Oh, wait, control five. There we go. That's a bit quicker. Because cliffs are slightly better than walls at being walls. We'll almost definitely get some bots hovering over some uh, wall that they can't place because there's still a cliff in the way if we do this, but... We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And is that all? Seems like it might be. Yeah, see, it's happening right here. I shouldn't have cancelled some of that. Uh, we definitely want cliff explosives here. Maybe not here. I guess that's fine. They're taking their sweet time with the cliff explosives. I guess they have a lot of jobs. But yeah, cliff explosives and picking up trees and rocks and stuff that are in the way of buildings that are that have ghosts should probably be a much higher priority. Uh, I have been considering... I'll probably maybe want to remove the accumulator at the front here. Uh, we'll see. This one just got destroyed. I think I'm already sold on removing that one. Maybe even remove all of these three. Seems like the big electric pole isn't getting damaged by the spitters if the laser turrets are at a diagonal. I need to see this actually happen. Um, I don't suppose any of you could oblige with an attack right while I'm looking? No? Okay then. Don't need this ice in my inventory. Oh, let's check Moors for uh, Iridite. That's what we needed, right, to make um, material signs. We need Iridium Plate, which is... Comes from Iridium Powder. Comes from Washed Iridite. We also need Anion Iron Exchange Beads. I didn't know just getting the ingot would be that complicated. How do we get these beads again? Okay, that we can make. Anion Iron Exchange Beads. In a chemical plant or biofacility, we need plastic, cryonite rod, sulfuric acid and steam. So we do know how to get 
I'm pretty sure Crushed Iridite is just going to be Pulverizer, yep. Um, washed Iridite is just like Washed Vulcanite, it seems like, except it doesn't make steam, so it's actually a little bit easier. The only waste product is stone. So... Apart from the Anion Ion Exchange Beads, which are just a bit of a pain, uh, Iridium Ingots... They actually require Vulcanite Block. Okay, so all of that we can do. And then we need... Uh, Iridium Plate... Is just Iridium Ingots placed into some kind of assembly machine. That's pretty straightforward. Significant data. Where do we find significant data? Uh-oh. Oh. Oh, I forgot this is Moors. That was a bit worrying for a moment there. I mean, it's not good, but I would be a lot more concerned if my home planet looks like this. It's good to know that Iridite requires Cryonite. Uh, does it? Wait, Iridite... Oh yeah, that's right. I sort of took it for granted, I just recognized it as something that I have. There are too many Factorio players on at the same time. <laughs> no worries, I'll be finishing up in half an hour. Um, let's see, where were we? Significant data. Oh no. Wait, that doesn't make significant data. How do we make significant data? Uh, FNEI? Okay, here we go. We need a supercomputer. That's... okay. So we need insights and thermofluid. Astronomic insight, energy insight, biological insight, material insight. How do we get insight? Material catalog and thermofluid and supercomputer. Okay. Material catalog is. Whoops. Catalog. Oh boy. Um. Supercomputer again, hold thermofluid, hold thermodynamics data, hot thermodynamics data, tensile strength data, comprehensive strength data. Was that all of these? Yes, indeed. So we need to make these four things and then basically shove it in a supercomputer with some cold thermofluid. And then we finally get our, well, we get material catalog, which we can use to make significant data. So it's the simulation recipes up here. Okay. And then material catalog we already have if we have significant data material insight maybe we already have if we are
We just need catalog and cold fluid. Okay. Damn, this is complicated. So the main thing is we need to know how to make material catalog. We need to make all four of these things. The rest sort of flows from that. Material testing pack. Material testing pack, plasma stream. Material testing pack and some other stuff we know how to make. Material testing pack and some other stuff we know how to make. Plasma stream, I'm pretty sure we can already do. Stone plus chemical gel, that's pretty easy. This is a lot of stuff, but... Um, oh, we do need stone. Oh, wait, we can make these on the ground. That's good. Okay. So I, I don't suppose we can put those in a cannon. I'm pretty sure we can't. Definitely not. So that's going to have to be a rocket. The easiest science is astronomical because it doesn't require exotic materials. I did not think any of these would not require exotic materials. This needs significant data. Which requires all of these things. Unless, well, there's other ways to get to it. Astronomic insight. Significant data, astronomic catalog. So it's going to look a lot like that production line, sort of. Okay. I need to secure the production chains for the exotic materials so that we can automate getting all of the stuff that we need to our orbital base. And then we can finally just put all of this stuff together. In the meantime, uh, our wall is building surprisingly quickly. Although it's not complete all the way down to here, but it's getting pretty close. I should definitely go and connect this up. I should just connect all of this to the wall as well. Let's grab a few extra solar panels and accumulators. Let's go faster than this. Material testing pack stack awful. Uh, oh, I already have it. Material testing pack. Ten. That's kind of bad. So you can send up 5,000 with a full rocket. We're definitely dedicating a rocket to that one. And not just because it turned out to be really difficult, annoying, and not very useful to send up multiple things in the same rocket. Okay. I don't like making data, but turning data into catalogs, catalogs into significant data, and then into science packs, and part after data is same for all sciences. Okay. All sciences scheme is various cards into catalogs, into insight, into significant data, into science pack. Need to start making color science to get significant data. Significant data is the third row. Okay. You can improve astronomic science with beryllium. Make the recipe more efficient, but astronomy is an easy way to generate significant data. I'm, I'm surprised. Um, I just started dragging the electric poles and then I activated the jetpack. I'm surprised it didn't mess up the uh, click and drag because it technically kills me whenever I use the jetpack. Which is why we end up with random things in... 
random things as blueprints in our inventory and stuff. One trap with the space sciences is building too big. You can win the game with like 5 SPM, don't need huge production lines. Yeah, uh, also Samza, Mass420, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Um, I'm doing sushi because I don't know the production lines and I'm more than happy to just do it that way until I know better what I'm doing. And maybe we'll go for higher SPM later on, if not on another playthrough. Let's put some radar down. Oops, went too far. Right about here. Try to attract the biters to this point. And... I really need to improve this once I actually expect the biters to attack. It would be a pretty weak stopgap to drag roboports over here. Whoops. Uh, I was literally just swapping these out for lasers, but it still did it a little bit too late. And I should have turned off my roboport. That was kind of close. Very sneaky expansion. If not for that, the whole wall could have got built without uh, without me having to do anything else. That all looks okay. Space sciences are great fun in my opinion. You can always tweak them in some way or another. Interesting. So it's not just shove more capacity at it. And see which... Uh, which of these power switches are switched on on the map. The fact that most of these are switched off suggests to me that... Okay, yeah, I really think I might end up removing all of the accumulators that are further forward than here. It's only this one that we're reading for the power switch, which is a pretty obvious wise move. I don't think it's particularly necessary to have extra accumulator charge here either because we've got more laser turrets that are always connected to the network. But if I do remove these extra accumulators, um, we might have to change the values on uh, the latches, or at least just this one. When A drops below 80% uh, switch on, if I remove three of these accumulators, that's going to happen every night. And then we're going to waste a whole lot of power when we're gaining the least of it. So what I might do is a little simulation. Unfortunately, I still don't have a circuit that tells me the lowest value that the accumulator charges have reached throughout the night. I really would like to make something like that. Um, NG made a circuit that does the maximum 
of a bunch of different signals that are being sent at it, but it was surprisingly difficult to patch it over to do minimum instead. But also, if you're comparing... The way that worked was it's comparing different signals like iron and copper. If you're comparing A with A, it's a bit more tricky. Um, actually, I might be getting an idea. So... Um, we need to compare a signal to itself one tick ago. Oh, oh no, ideas. We need to compare a signal to itself one tick ago. So, um, if we're if we're outputting A and we do an arithmetic combinator, A times 1, output B, and over here we have let's just use a red wire to illustrate this a little bit better. A times 1 output B, so one tick after this, we've got B. So B is A one tick ago. If A is smaller than B, output A. Uh, how is it going to start? If A, like, starts at 100. Hmm. We're going to need a memory cell. And how are we going to... I, I do have a circuit for this. Um, for this part, anyway. It's a little bit complicated. Uh, it is called a overwrite memory cell. And basically it deletes its old value and replaces it whenever you give it a signal. Um, I don't want that connected to here. But it's okay for now. I need another... I need another, um, some more power stuff. There is a limitation of this, uh, overwrite memory cell, whereby if you try to update it more than once every three ticks, um, it doesn't quite work. So we could have a timer that pushes this stuff through once every few ticks. Um, let's say if t is smaller than 5, output t input count, t and then if T equals, I don't know, zero. Output A input count. Okay. Let's remove this for a second so we know we're outputting A sometimes. Uh, never mind. If t is greater than zero, output a input count. Um, and we connect that to here. 
I'm not seeing any outputs from this. I guess t is never equal to zero. Let's do t equals one. Okay. And it looks like our memory cell is holding on to a equals one. Oh, a equals five. Stop outputting a equals five. Okay, good. That's working. Okay, so turn a into b. If a is smaller than b, output a. So when a goes to a smaller number, that didn't... Oh, okay. This is going to only output a for one tick, and it would have to coincide with this one. Uh, we could just put a pulse generator here instead. And we're simply going to assume that A is not going to drop more often than once every few ticks. So we'll get a pulse generator. And the way that works is just... Uh, if something is greater than zero, output it. And at the same time, multiply by negative one, and it goes to the input of this thing. So one tick after this receives an input that's held down, it receives the negative of that input from this combinator right here. So that's going to go there, and that's going to go there. And then... Uh, if we reduce a from 5 to 4, if we put a back up to 5, it's working. Fantastic. Okay, so I don't know that we could necessarily programmatically reset this very easily. Um, oh, you're fully charged. Uh, I need to get I need to separate these power networks. Can I make some more? I can. Fantastic. All right, so we're going to disconnect this as soon as it's got power. We'll get the accumulator charged as well. Or charging anyway. Right, so this is on its own power network, uh, one accumulator, two solar panels, two laser turrets. Uh, we'll turn this off. We will connect this to here. And then we need to set this to 100. Or to, we need to set this to a large number, so... I think all we have to do is pulse in... Oh, this is actually a pulse generator right here, so I think this part was redundant. But I don't care, I'm not going to mess with it now. So we'll set A to a thousand. Turn this off. A is one thousand. Um, as soon as A drops from... As soon as the accumulator charge drops a little bit, we should get an update on this memory cell. It's already at the point where all machines are running. Now I'm watching it getting fully backed up. Been watching CoverX process for the last three hours. Yeah, it's kind of fun to watch, sort of. There's something magical about it. It's the glow. I love how more and more are slowly made and it's spilling over into the new machines to be even more faster. Yes, indeed. So how long is it going to be before we see this thing working? It seems like it's getting dark. I don't want to miss it. Oh, I missed it. Okay. Accumulator charge is dropping. 99, 98. Fantastic. I'm going to blueprint this. 
uh, what should we call it? Get minimum accumulator charge. Okay. Actually, let's include the other power, shall we? Blueprint this. Get minimum accumulator charge. A. Um, records the lowest value to a memory cell. Use, uh, I guess we don't need this one. We do because the wire is up there. Use constant combinator bottom left to reset. I guess you could put it on a timer or something. That's going straight to the circuit room. And why don't we put it on the website? Uh, Factorio prints. Create. Uh, blueprint string. Wait, I did get the blueprint string from here, right? Yeah. And title. Description. Tags. Circuit counter. And then... Screenshot. Okay. Save. And we're done. Double check the link I just put in the chat. Yep, looks good. Wait, three solar panels? Oh yeah, that's right. Fantastic. What was that sound? Oh. Hello, wall. Thank you for the solar panel. That's cool, I guess. And how low did our... Oh my goodness, at 28%. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. With four times as many accumulators, the lowest it got was uh, a bit above 80. So yeah, if we remove all of these extra accumulators, we're going to need to patch all of our uh, latches to turn the power switches on at, let's say, 25% instead of 80. And here's that thing I predicted earlier. Because we cancelled the, uh, the cliff explosives here, there's some ghosts that need the cliffs to be gone, but they didn't get removed. No big deal. Okay. 
Ashep, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I think we'll give it a save there. And let's see who else is streaming Factorio today. We got Mucky, no. and Dune. I think it's been five minutes since I raided Mucky. Let's maybe drop in on him. Dune? Uh, I've raided Dune like ten times in the last week, I feel like. Although Mucky was kind of the default before that. Who did I who did I raid last? I think it was Dune. Yeah, I think I raided Dune yesterday. Alright, thank you all for watching. Do take care and I'll see you next time. Check out the blueprints or the Discord if you're interested. If you have questions or requests, by all means let me know. And let's go drop in on Mucky. All right. Take care, guys. See you next time. Um, purple science, you've slowed right down because no stone coming.